Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 24th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us, please allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to drag out your brushes and, and some paints and paint along with us each show. And if you've been with us before, allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. Tell you what, let's get started today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us at home. And while they're doing that, let me show you what I've got up here. I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use any size that you want. This is a pre-stretched double prime canvas. Then I've covered the entire canvas with just a very thin, even coat of liquid white. Now liquid white is an oil-based paint that allows us to actually blend color up here on the canvas rather than working ourselves to death on the palette. Just makes painting easy. So it's a fantastic day here. I thought we'd just do a very warm little scene that makes you feel good in here. So let's start out with the old two inch brush, a little tiny one. Take a little bit of the Indian yellow, just a very small amount on the two inch brush. Load a little color on the brush. And let's go right up here. Maybe we'll have a beautiful little sky that's just full of warm colors that, as I say, sort of makes you feel good when you look at it. So you're making little X's, little crisscross strokes, go all the way across the canvas, like so. Just about like so. Maybe we'll have a little water in here. I love water. I think it's so gorgeous. And it's very easy to paint in this technique. And we'll reflect a little of that color right down into the water. And then, then, let's tell you what, without cleaning the brush, let's just go into a little bit of the, of the yellow ochre. Once again, we do not need a great deal of paint here. Just just a little paint. Go right above the yellow. Still making our little crisscross strokes, a little X's. And just like that, we'll lay in a little bit of the yellow ochre. There, yellow ochre is sort of a nice gold color. It's beautiful, beautiful little color. And we'll reflect a little of that into our water. There, <laughs> shoot, time to get crazy. Time to get crazy. Let's go right into the bright red. And still, we haven't washed the brush. Just a little bit of the bright red. And right up here, making our little X's, little crisscross strokes, we'll add a little bit of that. And red's such a warm color. It just, it just makes you feel good when you look at it. it. Makes you happy. You almost can't help it. Just, just sort of warms up your whole day. But too much of it will set your world on fire. So. All we want is just a nice pinkish, reddish glow up here in the sky. That's all we're looking for today. And while I have that on the brush, we'll just add a little of that down here too. In the water, we're just going to reflect the same basic colors that we have in our sky. Something about like that. There. Now then, still haven't washed the brush. I look, I look for ways that are easy. In technical terms, that's known as, as laziness. There, <laughs> we'll take a little bit of the thalo blue and alizarin crimson, mix them together, right on the brush. And let's go right up in here. And with that color, sort of a lavender color, we'll just, we'll just fill in the top of the sky. Thalo blue and alizarin crimson. And you can, you can take this to the blue side or the red side, just sort of depends on your mood and how you feel. It's strictly and completely up to you. Maybe, maybe I tell you what, look here. Add a little bit more color to my brush. Maybe in our world there lives, yep, you're right. Just a happy little cloud up here. We can, we can make the indication of a little cloud just by tapping. There he is, there he is. Little cloud, little cloud, oh, big cloud. So you can just let it go. Let your imagination take you wherever you wanna go. But all we're doing is just tapping in some basic little shapes here. Maybe we'll put one on the other side. We don't want him left out. Something like that. Now then, while we have that lavender color on the brush, the blue and the crimson, we'll just come down here and fill in the whole bottom of this. Once again, all we're doing here is just reflecting the colors from the sky into the water. There we are. Now then. Let's take and wash the old brush. We wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner, and I really suggest that you use odorless thinner, or, or you'll become very unpopular around the home front. There's a screen down here in the bottom of the bucket that I scrub the brush against, and we'll shake it off <laughs> and just beat the devil out. That really is the fun part of this whole technique. 
just cleaning the brush now, very lightly three hairs and some air we'll just go right over those just blend them and it'll make instant clouds and the more you blend them the softer they'll become and you can continue to blend them till they absolutely just disappear it's up to you up to you all right I think maybe today in this little painting, let's build us a little mountain. For that, we'll use some black, a little Prussian blue, a little lizard crimson, maybe some Van Dyke brown. So we have black, Prussian blue, lizard crimson, a little Van Dyke brown. Pull the paint out as flat as you can get it. Really get tough with it. Cut across, get our little roll of paint. Lives right on the edge of the knife. Now you have to make your first major decision. Where does your mountain live? Maybe in our world? Yep, does now. Our mountain lives right there with a very firm pressure. Just literally push the paint right into the fabric, right into the fabric. This is a chance to really get tough. Take out all your frustrations and hostilities and whatever. Maybe there's a maybe there's another little peak right there. Wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. This technique is so fantastic because it allows you individuality. We use no patterns, no tracings. And we just we just want to show you a technique and turn you loose on the world. Because the canvas is wet, you can move this paint. You can pull it. It'll slide right on top of there. Just like so. Now if we had a dry canvas, <laughs> at this point you'd be in well you'd be in agony city because the paint will not move like it does on this wet surface. And that's what the liquid white does. It allows us to actually blend color right up here. Blend color. And it's also an excellent way here of laying out your whole mountain. By pulling it in the direction like this downward, you can begin laying out all different ideas for highlights and shadows in your mountain without being committed. There we go. Now then, let's put a little highlight on that mountain. Today, Let's take titanium white. I'll reach up here and we'll get a little of the midnight black. I want a grayish color. So just black and white. Black and. There, just makes it a little. But I want to leave it sort of marble so there's a lot of things happening in there. Pull the paint out. And once again, our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Touch. No pressure. And just follow right down the mountain there. But no pressure. Absolutely no pressure. There. If you've painted with us before, you've probably heard me talk about when I was teaching my son Steve to paint. I used to tell him just to pretend that he was a whisper that just floated right across the mountain. And that way he understood how delicate of a touch. So maybe that's a good analogy, good way to remember it. Just be a whisper that floats across here. Very delicate. And by applying no pressure, it allows this paint to break. In other words, it leaves all these little holes in it. And that's what really makes it look neat. It makes it look like a mountain. And it's very simple. There. Now let's make us a shadow color for that. We'll use a little white. Oh, a little bit of the, a little bit of the Prussian blue. Maybe just a touch more. I'm going to add a little Van Dyke brown, maybe even a little black in there. What the heck? Even put a little crimson. Ooh, I like it. I like it. That's a nice color. Just sort of decide what, what color you want your shadows to be, and that's what, what they should be. Our little roll of paint. We can go right up in here. And now we can begin putting in the indication of all kinds of little shadows in there. I'm going to add just a touch more blue to my color, just so it shows up a little better, and you can see it there. There in here. Every highlight needs its own individual shadow. If it doesn't have its own shadow, it, it just sort of lays there dead. It won't, it won't play with you. There. Something like that. And you can sort of play back and forth. Maybe you want to go back in here and just change the shape of this a little bit so it has a little more character to it. You can do that because on this piece of canvas you have total and complete power. You can literally do anything here. 
you have ultimate power on this piece of canvas. Shoot, when I go home, I, I don't have power over anything but the garbage. But here, <laughs> this is my world. And I can do anything here. I can move mountains. Can move mountains, change the course of rivers. Anything that I want to do. There. Put a little shadow right underneath there. Okay. Maybe here and there, a little something like that. Now we take a clean, dry brush and just tap. I want to diffuse the base of this mountain so it looks like it's sort of laying in the mist down here. But always follow the angles. Follow those angles. There, and then lift upward. Just enough to take out the tap marks and to blend everything together. Like so. There. See there? That's all we need. Tell you what, sometimes it's a lot of fun. L let's do this. Let's, you begin seeing things here. I like to have a lot of depth in my paintings. So by, we'll just put another little range of mountains right here. Just drop them in the same way. And watch how it pushes that first range back. That's simple. Just put them in. Same exact way as we did the others. Scrape off the excess paint. Blend them out. There we go. Something about like that. Back to our little highlight colors, the gray color. Same thing. Follow those angles. <laughs> Gotta make those little noises or it just didn't work. Maybe this one, yeah, it comes right down like that. See, we could pull it over here and blend it together. But notice the angles. Angles are very important. If light's coming through here, it's only going to strike at a given angle. So most of your highlights will be in the same basic angle and most of your shadows will be in the same basic angle, depending on where your light's coming from. There. Something like so. Clean, dry brush. And once again, just tap this a little to create the illusion of mist down at the base. And lift upward. All right. Now, let's have some fun. Shoot. Tell you what, let's do. We just use that same old brush. I'm going to take a little of the white, a little bit of that mountain color, mix them together, and I'm just sort of pushing the brush. Get a little color on it. Maybe we back here in the background, there's some little foothills. And the little foothills can be made just by doing something as simple as this, just tapping downward. Just tapping downward. There. That's all there is to it. Gently. Little quarter inch strokes. Very small. Lift upward. It'll make it look like little trees that live way back here in the distance. Far, far away. Pulling straight down. Straight down. It's most important to come straight down. And then gently coming across will make the indication of instant reflections. Sometimes it's fun to, to have several layers here, and you can do that just by doing it the same way. There, tap in some basic little shapes, pop it up, make it look like little things far away, and then we'll put in another little reflection. As you come forward, each layer should get a little bit darker. A little bit darker. Shoot, I tell you what, let's have some real fun here. Maybe there's another one that comes we out, we out, there. Something like that. Something about my cat. Once again, we need our little reflection, so just give it a little, little downward pull. Go across. And wherever. I don't know. You sort of have to make up your mind. Each one of these, though, will create another plane in your painting and help that illusion of distance and depth. I'm going to take a little sap green, a little yellow, just tap the brush the same way. And as things get closer to us, we begin seeing a little color. So we can just, I'm using the same old dirty brush, just add a little yellow to it and some sap green. And we can just begin tapping in the indication of little colors that you can see. When things are far away from you, it's difficult to see color. Maybe just a hint of green back here. There we go. Now. Take a little touch of the liquid white, put it on here, pull it out very flat, 
and I'm gonna add a small amount of the bright red, very, very small amount, cut across. Then we can go right up in here and just act like you're trying to cut a hole right in the canvas. There, take out really all your hostilities here. Just really get tough with it. Just back and forth like you're trying to saw a hole through there. This will create the illusion of a little water line. It also is a nice light area between the darks. It separates, makes everything really stand out and look good. Okay, maybe, hmm, let's have some fun. Clean off a spot to work here. Let's take some black. We'll use some Prussian blue, phthalo green, alizarin crimson. There we go. We just mix up a pile of color. All right, let me grab a old brush here. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just use a little fan brush. You could do this with a one inch brush, fan brush, whatever. Just use a little fan brush today. Load a lot of color into the bristles. And let's have in our world some happy little evergreen trees. Just use the corner of the brush and as you work down the tree, push harder and harder, bending the bristles. Down here, ooh, we're really getting tough. We're just bending it all the way down to the furrow. Get tough. Show it who's boss. These little evergreens live right in your fan brush. You just sort of, at times, have to really get forceful and push them out. There they go. Here comes another one. And you decide how many trees you want. You decide. Really, all we're trying to do here is show you a technique. We use no patterns or no tracings. It's strictly up to you because you can learn to compose as you paint if you'll just practice. If you'll just practice a little. But if you like to use patterns, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. And you can trace your pattern on here, put liquid white over it. And the liquid white is still transparent enough that you can see the tracing through it if you like to do that. Personally, I enjoy the, the freedom that comes with not having a pattern. Because you can literally, as I mentioned earlier, you can learn to compose and create your paintings as you go. And you look at them, things, you, you'll begin to see things. And with practice, you'll be able to see more and more. After you've done a dozen paintings or so, you won't believe what you can do. Every day I get, I get letters from fantastic people all over the United States and in several foreign countries. And they're sending us pictures of, of paintings that you wouldn't believe. And they've never had an art lesson. All they've done is they've watched the TV series and, and they've learned. And you can too. Okay, let's grab an old one inch brush. Maybe we'll have some bushes down here at the base of these trees. Just sort of push upward with the brush and make the indication of some happy little bushes that live right down here. <laughs> Watch here, turn the brush over. We'll tap in a little color underneath. I know you're saying, Bob, you have really messed it up this time, but you watch. One of the most fantastic things about this whole technique is the fact that we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents because very soon, very soon, you learn to work with anything that happens and it takes all the fear out of painting. There, we just tap some of that under there too. And as you've probably figured out by now, this is going to end up being some gorgeous reflections that live right under that tree. So we just take a two inch brush, grab, and pull straight down, very gently. Just pull it straight down, over here, straight down. And then go across. And we have instant reflections. That easy. Now, I have several of each brush going, so I don't have to spend all my time just washing brushes. Dip the brush into a little liquid white. Be right back. Grab a little sap green, a little yellow. Let's go right up in here. And let's just put some little sparkles out here on these bushes. Look at their sun's playing through there and just zinging through. A little yellow ochre here and there, a little Indian yellow. Occasionally, at least a little touch of the bright red. And just vary your colors. Vary your colors. Doom. There we go and work in layers. Do one little bush at a time. Don't get greedy. <laughs> Sometimes it starts working so well. 
we decide to do all of our bushes at once and then there's no separation between them, no depth. Poor little bush just gets lost there. There, a little heavier in the yellow ochre. Just enough to change the flavor a little bit, make it stand out as an individual. There we go. Now, on the other side, we'll do the same basic thing. Sap green, cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre. There. Grab a little bit more of the green. Doom. Look at that. Did you ever think you could make all these gorgeous bushes that easy? You really can. Really and truly can. And maybe, tell you what, let's have some fun. Let's just ref reflect a little of that down into the water. I don't want a lot of reflection, but just a little. Just tap a little of that color right down into the water. On the other side, same thing. There. You can make some of the most beautiful reflections in this technique that you've ever seen. And when I was a traditional painter, reflections were one of those things that absolutely drove me crazy. And in this technique, it may be one of the easiest things that happens just come across. But when you pull this down, oh, so gentle. One hair and some air. That gentle, easy. Caress it very lightly. Very, very gently. And let's put a few little trunks in our trees. We'll take some white, a little dark sienna, mix them together. Tiny little roll of paint on the knife. We can go up in here, decide where you where your trunk lives in the tree, just touch. Now we're not gonna see the entire trunk because we're gonna have some limbs that protrude out in the front of the, of the trunk. So just here and there, and you can scratch in the indication. Makes it look like there's a lot of trees there instead of just a few. <laughs> there we go. See? There. And you could just take and scrape right through the paint and make it look like little sticks and twigs and all kinds of little things that live back in the woods there. <laughs> That's where all my little friends live, the little rabbits and the squirrels and all those little characters. If you've painted with me before, you know I have a lot of little animal friends. A lot of times we show them on the program. I'll show you some before the series is over. I get a lot of letters in one of the earlier series. I showed a little squirrel that lived with me named Peapod the Pocket Squirrel. <laughs> He's He's something else. And now he's an old squirrel. He's just about, just about ready to turn loose. And we turn all of our animals back to the wild. We don't, we don't keep them. We don't try to make pets out of them. Okay, let's take a little, little sap green and a little yellow, make a dark green here. And let's just begin putting some highlights on some of these trees. As you work down a tree, allow it to get darker and darker and darker until it just fades right off into the very dark color. Remember that your light's coming predominantly from the right in this painting. Your mountain tells you so right there. So a little more color on the right than on the left. We'll give that indication in the trees. There. But see down in here, keep it very dark because you need a nice shadow area in there. It makes them look deep, very deep. There we go. A few over here. Something about like that. This old tree needs some. There we go. Just drop them right on. There. Darker, darker, darker down here toward the base. Shoot, we got some nice highlights in the evergreens. Now then, all this needs something to stand on so it doesn't fall over in the lake here. Or, and or it might be a river. Whatever you want it to be. We'll take some Van Dyke Brown and let's put some land under all this. Pull sort of the angle that you think the land would flow. Remember that water always, always sits in a recessed area. So chances are that there's sort of an angle coming down like this. There we go. Chances are. That's not 100% true, but most of the time. A little brown and white. Come right back in here. No pressure. It's just like putting snow on the mountain. Just like putting snow on the mountain. The angles are very important here, very important. You wouldn't want to bring these straight down. It'll look like cliffs hanging there. There we go. A little bit of our liquid white. That'll give us a little water line 
clean the bottom up, sort of bring it all together. There we go. There. A little back in here. Maybe a little ripple here and there and there and here. Wherever. Painting is a very individual thing. So when you're doing your painting, you change it any way that makes you feel good. Because we each see nature through different eyes. And the way I see it may not be the way necessarily that you see it. I only want to show you a technique. A technique that makes painting very easy and that you can do. Anybody can do. I've absolutely never met anyone who could not paint. There. Just take the point of the knife and we've cut a few little sticks and twigs and things in here. This also helps show different layers, shows depth in your painting. There are a few over on this side. Something like that. Sometimes there's a little bush or two that grows down the edges. You can drop them in. Just sort of helps fill everything in. Shoot, I think we're about to the point where we can sign this one. Take a little paint thinner, a little bit of the bright red. Make the paint very thin, almost like ink. And let's go right up in here and we'll sign this one. I really hope you've enjoyed this painting. It's one that'll bring you a lot of pleasure because of all the colors, makes you feel good in here. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us. It's a fantastic day here and I hope it is wherever you are. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. Today, I can have a black canvas, as you plainly can see, and we make the canvas black by covering it with a nice coat of black gesso. Now, the black gesso is applied with just a foam brush or something, and it's allowed to dry completely. On top of the black gesso, I've added a, a coat of alizarin crimson and phthalo blue mixed with liquid clear. In other words, we've made a very thin lavender color, and we've covered the entire canvas with it, and it's all wet and slick, and it's ready to go. So let's go. I thought today I'd just show you a fantastic little painting that's very easy to do. Then it's a lot of fun. And we'll just use the two inch brush a great deal. And so let's just see what happens here. Let's start out with the old two inch brush. And I'm just going to tap the corner, just the corner, into just small, small amount of titanium white. You don't need much. Don't need much. Now we already have this lavender color up here. So watch what happens. Now we'll just begin tapping. Just tap. That's all you have to do is just begin tapping. Very, very easy. It's picking up the color that's underneath. In other words, that lavender color. There. And as you tap, you begin to form all kinds of little shapes. Turn the brush. There. All right. This is one of the neatest, simplest ways of making a sky that's so fantastic. The black canvases are just unreal. They will do things that Ooh, they make your heart beat faster. They are gorgeous. And color stands out so much, so much brighter on there. I'm going to add the least little touch of dark sienna to my brush. So here and there, I'm going to put in a few little light brown spots in it. Right in there, just wherever you want them. Vary some colors back and forth here. Something maybe about like so. Maybe the least little touch of phthalo blue here and there. All we're doing, though, is just tapping with the top corner of the old two-inch brush. Just the top corner. That's all we need. There. Vary the colors. Vary the colors. So we have a lot of things happening. And the more that you tap, the darker it'll become because it's picking up the color that's underneath. And what's so much fun if you're ever doing a canvas like this in front of friends or relatives or doing any kind of demonstration for someone, don't tell them that you've put anything on the canvas. Just let them see you start with a, with a cold black canvas and all of a sudden you begin tapping and all of these gorgeous colors will appear. And you can do this with any transparent color or semi-transparent color. In other words, color that may not be totally transparent, but it's transparent enough for what we're doing. There. And a good way to test it is take a little on your finger and put it right on the black canvas. If it still looks black, then it's, it's transparent enough for what we're doing. All right. And there. 
Just keep tapping though. There we go. Something about like so. All right. And you can make it as bright as you want it or as dull as you want it. Now I like paintings that are quite subdued, very dark. They almost look like traditional paintings sometimes when you do them that way. But it's up to you. Some people like paintings that are very bright and shiny and they make you feel good. So painting is a very individual thing. There. Now, I have several brushes going to me. Get another one that's nice and clean and dry and very lightly making tiny, tiny little X strokes. I'm just going to begin blending this very gently, barely touching the canvas, just, just, just caressing it a little bit. Now you can blend this to any degree of softness that you want it to be, or you can leave it quite bright, quite sparkly there. It's up to you, up to you. All right. Okay, now maybe in our world, tell you what, let me go back to that brush. I'm gonna pick up a little touch of the phthalo blue again. And I'm add a little white to it. So we have phthalo blue and white basically. And I'm just still tapping that corner. I'm going to turn the brush sideways and just maybe tap in the shape. Maybe there's a little cloud lives right there or a little cloud shape, something like that. Really, I just want a little bluish color in here to sort of change the flavor of the sky. Make it a little more interesting. Put a little cool color right in the middle of all these gorgeous warmer colors. And back to our brush that's clean and once again, very lightly. Just barely, barely touch the canvas. And then we go over the entire sky area. Something like that. And that's a very nice little way of making a, a little sky that's just, it's just different and it's quite pretty. Maybe we'll put a little brighter spot right down in here. Now you can work on this for as long as you want and you, can, you won't believe what you can do if you'll just try it. You will not believe the effects that you can come up with. You can make some of the most gorgeous things that you've ever seen. Work in layers, just keep building and building and building and you can go back over and over and over till you get it exactly the way that you want it. And everybody will see it differently. So do it the way that you like it, not necessarily the way that I do it. Because you'll do it much better when you do it. There. Okay. Now maybe in our world, maybe, 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 Shoot, let's get crazy. Let's take, uh, we'll use a little sap green, a little Van Dyke brown, some black, a little black, maybe just a little bit of the Prussian blue. I'm looking for a nice dark greenish color here, something about like so. I'm still just gonna tap the top corner in here. Now then, maybe there's some happy little bushes that live back here. Using just the top corner of the old two inch brush, all we're doing is tapping in some very basic little shapes. Very basic, they're quite dark. We back here. There, add a little bit more color. Come right in here. I wanna add a little dark sienna to that too. Oh yeah, that's nice, that's nice. That changes the flavor just enough that it stands out there. Just enough. It's very dark, I hope you can see it. There. Sometimes it's fun to begin playing in here. So watch. So say I have several, several brushes going, so I don't have to spend all my time washing brushes. I'm gonna take some white, least little touch of the yellow ochre. Once again, I'm just gonna tap that corner. Just wanna use that corner, okay? And maybe a little light is zinging through here and it's just striking the tops of some little bushes that live right in here. Just by using that corner, we can create that illusion. Something like that. Wherever you think they should live. Now you could do this with a, either one of the round brushes or the one inch brush, whatever. There's really no limit to it. Just about any old brush would work. It's basically the shapes you're most interested in. A little bit more of the yellow ochre and white. But it really stands out against that against that other color there. Yeah, back to my brush. It had the darker colors. Shoot, 
I like to make big trees with these two-inch brushes. They're a lot of fun. And so often we avoid it, the old two-inch brush, because it's so big. But it'll do fantastic things if you just give it a chance. Watch here. Maybe there's a big tree that, okay, right here. There it is. Right up here lives, does now, a big tree that sort of hangs over here and he watches everything. The little squirrels live and play up in here and they have a good time. All you're looking for here are basic shapes, very basic little shapes. There. Now the black is back here, so you don't have to put a lot of color. It takes very little color. Same colors once again. Maybe there's another one over here. Just sort of let your imagination go, because in, when you're looking deep into the forest or the woods like this, trees just sort of grow however make them happy. <laughs> they have a good time. They have a good time. There. Maybe we'll come right down in front like that. All right, just vary colors back and forth. I added the least little touch of yellow ochre to the same color. Just enough, there, just enough to sort of flavor it and make it stand out a little bit. This will be a very, very dark, subdued type painting. Now then. But look at all the different layers that you've created and just using basically nothing other than the old two inch brush. Well, let's make a little brown. For that, I'm gonna use some sap green and lizard crimson about equal parts so we'll just mix that up real good this is one of the few colors that we really mix well normally normally we don't over mix paint but these we need them well mixed to make a nice brown and i'll reach over and get a little bit of white and put in there right in the edge okay let me clean off my knife just wipe the old knife with some paper towels and get a little roll of paint and come right up in here and very lightly, just pushing that color right into the canvas. Maybe there's just a little touch, a little hint of land back in here that you can see. Not much, just a little. Let it go. See there? Something maybe about like that. I don't want a whole bunch. Now then. I'm going to use the one inch brush now because I'm going to do something a little smaller. Take some of that same brown color I made, a little bit of black. There. Okay. And I'm going to tap using the top edge and just tap in indication of another layer of bushes. Each layer, once again, will create more depth in your painting. Now, look right here. See what happens? You can see behind that. And each one of these layers once again, I know you get tired of hearing that, but it creates that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. And I bet you've seen paintings that look very flat and they sort of disturb you. There we go. Something about like that. Once again, that creates another layer in there. And you could put several in there. Shoot, if you wanted to. See, so you could put another little layer just by adding the indication of a little soil that you can see, a little dirt. Right in there, right in there, about like that. We go back to our little one inch brush with a dark color on it and you can push that back and make it recessed. Each one of those though is another layer, more depth. And we can just tap the top corner of that brush right into a little bit of the yellow ochre and I'm gonna touch the least little bit of bright red every once in a while. and just tap on the indication of just a few little things. Let's get a little sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre, mix them together, and I'm just mixing these on the brush. Oh, that's nice, nice color. We still haven't cleaned the brush. Same old dirty brush. We're just adding color and allowing it to blend together. Just the top corner though. Maybe while we have that old brush working, maybe up in here, we'll put a few little highlights right in there. Something about like that. Load a little more color. There. 
see, there's no end to this. You can make as many different things as you can imagine. You're only limited on this piece of canvas by your imagination. Of course, I believe that's the only limitations in life also, is just your imagination. Because anything that you can conceive in your mind and you believe, I think you can do it. I'm going back to the big brush. Shoot, that one's too slow. Let's take a little bit of yellow ochre, get a little sap green. I'll be right back there. Just sort of mix those together on a brush. And I'm going to tap the brush to load a little bit of paint right out on the end of the bristles. Let's go back up in here now. This old tree here, I'm using the brush sideways, just the corner. Look at that. See? You can just make all kinds of little highlights on those rascals. There. Wherever you want them. Think about form and shape. Don't just throw these on at random. There. Think about the old tree and how it looks and what makes it stand out. Spend some time out in your yard or just, just go out and make friends with a tree. Shoot, there's nothing wrong. If you're an artist, you're allowed to do weird and crazy things. Sometimes just go out and spend some time talking to a tree. Of course, your neighbors are going to look at you a little strange, but they'll say, yeah, yeah. He's a painter, so, you know, a little weird, He's it's expected. <laughs> now, you really don't have to go talk to a tree, but what I'm saying is spend some time studying trees. Just study them. Make friends with them in that manner. Okay, let's get crazy. I'm going to take some black, Prussian blue, same little dark colors, all of them, dark sienna, Van Dyke, crimson. It doesn't matter as long as it's good and dark. Maybe. Maybe there's an old rickety tree that lives out here, an old, some kind of old evergreen tree, and he lives right here in front of this one. I want this old tree to look like it's had, like me. He's had a rough old life. There. His arms just sort of hang out every which way. I really want him to, want him to look old and tired. He's really had it rough out here. Maybe when he was little, uh, maybe a big elk came through here or something and stepped on him and sort of hurt him a little bit, and he's never been right since. There. See, so just make up little stories. And, you know, people, people look at you like you're a little strange, but once again, if you're an artist, people sort of expect that, so it's all right. And we know, because artists have more fun than anybody. A few little indications of some sticks in there. We'll take a little little sap green, a little yellow, a little, little bit on the two inch brush. Okay, go back up in here and just very lightly tap in a few highlights on that old tree. There. Okay, a little more paint on the brush. There we go. See, it's unbelievable what you can do. Basically, we've used nothing on this but the one and two inch brush and the knife. You can do some of the most gorgeous paintings if you'll just practice with very little equipment. All right, shoot. In my mind, I think we ought to have another little tree that lives right in here. We need to fill this corner up. That's the reason I think there ought to be a tree here. So where do you want it? When you do your painting like this, this corner may have more in it or less in it. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. Let me just put some of that color right down in here. I want the water to reflect these colors. So even though you can't see that, there's a little of that color down in there. There we go, maybe. A nice tree lives right here. We are really layering a lot of trees. in here. Okay. Now let's have some fun with the old liner brush. I'm going to take a paint thinner, paint thinner, a little bit of white with some dark sienna in it to make a light brown color. But I've mixed paint thinner with it so it's thin, almost like ink, very thin. Let's go up in here. Now here and there and there and here. 
we'll just add a few little sticks and twigs and all kinds of little things wherever you think they should be. There's always little things that grow out from behind here. There's one. Just sort of decide where they are. There. The liner brush, though, if, it, if you have any trouble making this paint stick, chances are you just need to add more paint thinner to it. Don't be afraid to add quite a bit of paint thinner. There we are. Or you can even put the liquid clear in it. I just use paint thinner because it's convenient. But whatever. Okay. Let me go back to the old brush. It's got the green on it. And let's put a few highlights on this tree that we put right here in the foreground. Just a few. Just using the corner of the brush. That's all we're using. There. Darker, darker down toward the base here because there's going to be some big shadow areas in here. A little bit more of the yellow ochre. A little bright red here and there. Maybe. Yep. You're right. There's another one right in there. Just make up your mind where you think they should live and drop them in. There we go. And everybody's painting will be different. And that really is the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. If everybody's were the same, it would be very dull. There. That's one of the reasons that I really don't like to trace paintings onto a canvas before I start. It puts boundaries on you. Boundaries on your, on your creative ability. Let's go on the other side. Maybe over in here. Use those same colors. Maybe this little tree here. We'll put some nice little things on it too. There we are. All right. Work in layers. Work in layers. Do one layer at a time. Trees are nothing but big clumps of bushes that got together and grew tall. So each limb, maybe you can look at it just as a bush and then put them together. It'll make your tree have shape and form and be interesting. There we go. See how you can just vary those colors back a little bit here and there and there and here. Just enough to change the flavor a little bit. All right, back to my little script liner brush. Maybe in our world, who knows, who knows right here. Maybe there's just an old tree trunk it's sticking right out. Ah. Put some wiggledy limbs on it. Just some old wiggly limbs on it. Wherever you think they should be. That's the fun part though. It's adding these little details. These are the things that make your painting special. Of course none of us are interested in the old happy buck, but if you are and you're out selling your paintings, these little things are what will make your painting sell while somebody else's painting just lays there. We can put a few little things here and there on this side. Don't want them all on just one side. Maybe up in here. Tell you what, sometimes it's fun. I'll take a little, take a little of that brown color we made with the crimson and the, and the sap green. Maybe, maybe there's a big tree. Chum, lives right there. Got to make those old noises. And he's got a friend named Charlie. Charlie lives right here. There he is. There in this old tree. Maybe these are, maybe these trees died in the last storm or something. Just their old stalks out here. Put a few little limbs on it. But basically, there's not much going on here. Just a few limbs and gnarly things. Something about like him. And then let's take a little titanium white on the two inch brush and watch here. Watch here. Pull straight down, straight down. Now we put that tree color on the water here. So we'll get all of these beautiful tones and hues automatically. Just like him. Straight down though, and then very lightly go across. It just gives it a watery appearance. That easy. That easy. This black gesso is one of the neatest things that we've ever invented. Absolutely is fantastic. Now then, let's take a little bit of our brown we made.
put some white with it, pull it out very flat, little roll of paint, and let's go up in here and just begin laying in the indication of some little land masses that live back in here. And I'm just pushing quite hard with a knife, just like so. There we go. See there? Just wherever. Wherever. Okay. Now then, maybe find an find old brush. Oh, there it is. When you get my age, sometimes the mind goes. Maybe there's a little bush that lives right out here. We'll put a little island out here. So we need some dark here. Maybe it comes all the way over. Maybe it's a peninsula. We don't know. Just sort of, you decide. All right. Need a little color on it. Use a little of that yellow ochre. Mm. There we go. See, let all them little rascals just hang off there and play. There's just so many little things going on in there. But you never believed you could do all that with a great big old two-inch brush. But you can. You really can. Now then, underneath that, indication maybe of a little reflection. Come across. And take a little bit of that same color we use for the land. And just sort of work it around here. See there? There we go. Something about like that. Just enough to give the indication of little things that are happening. Back to our little liner brush and some light color. And here and there and there and here we can put the indication of some little sticks and twigs that live out here. Like that. Wherever you want them. A few little things on the other side over here. There we go. Okay, don't want this one left out. Some things that are growing out here right on the edge. Okay, let's go back to our little one inch brush. I'm gonna put a little liquid white on it because as you know, one of our golden rules is a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. And we have several layers now of paint up here. So right along the edge here, we'll just put a few little bushes that live there. Something about like that. Just enough so they stand out. And sometimes it's fun to tell you what let's do. Got a second left here. We'll just do something like this. Now then a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna mixed together. Maybe there's what remains of an old tree laying right here. Put in the basic shape. A little light color to highlight him. You can just use the old knife, put in a limb here and there on it. A little touch of the liquid white. And you can come right around his edge here, just make him look like he's sitting right down in the water. Hope you try this one. You'll be amazed at what you can do using the black gesso. It's one of the neatest things you've ever seen. From all of us, I'd like to wish you a happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. You know, in each series there has to be a crazy painting, and I thought today this would be our crazy painting. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what's happened up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. And today I've taken a little bit of uh, acrylic paint, black and, and blue, and just taken a paper towel and I went all over it and let that dry completely. After that's dried completely, then I've taken, covered the entire canvas with a very, very thin coat of the liquid clear. Then I've taken a paper towel and wiped off every bit that I can get off. You can never wipe it all off. It is still very slick and quite wet. But if you put too much clear on here, this is very hard to do. So put it on the least amount that you can, then take a paper towel or a soft rag wipe every bit of it off that you can get, and then we'll do this. And I think you'll be tickled at what, can, what you can do with, with something that starts out looking this bad. So let's take an old two inch brush today, and we'll go right into a little bit of the titanium white. Just a small amount, small amount, something like so. I'm just tapping a little into the corner here. And you sort of have to start deciding. I wanna make some big clouds up here, and I think today we'll have a, tell you what let's do, let's do a winter scene today. That's a lot of fun. Just going to start any old where, making little tiny circles with a corner of the brush. Now some of these colors will show through. 
And here and there, and there and here, I'm gonna take a little phthalo blue, very little, and just add it to the brush. So we begin getting little white spots and little blue places going here, there. But just mix it, stir it up, just stir it up. Stir it up. See, some of these dark colors, though, are gonna show through. Maybe this is gonna look like, maybe it's just before a big storm, big snowstorm, what the heck? It's up to you, you decide. But just sort of vary it back and forth here between the, the phthalo blue and white and just the pure white. Just tap a little color in. And you could begin making some very basic little cloud shapes. There, just the corner of the brush. Just the corner. And you can, you can put these splotches on here with any old color that you find. It doesn't matter. Whatever color you sort of want to show through. There we go. And you, you'll be amazed at what you can do if you just try. Sometimes, you know, artists sort of have a reputation of being a little different. And that helps sometimes. Let your imagination go. Let it go. Because that's where new ideas come from, is from imagination. And practice visualizing things in your mind. It's unbelievable what you can do if you just practice a little. And don't be afraid to experiment. There we are. You know, I, I read some time ago that don't be afraid to, to go out on a limb because that's where the fruit is, is out on the end of the limb. And the same is true here. There. See, now we're not covering up all those little things. Some of them are showing through. And it makes beautiful effects. And it'll drive people crazy trying to figure out how in the world you made them. And you can leave more show or you can cover more up. The white is an opaque color, so it will cover quite strongly. It's totally up to you. There we go. <laughs> all right, and I'm just going over and over and doing the same basic thing, just to make all these little cloud effects. As I say, it looks like there's a big storm gonna come and maybe it's gonna snow and all the little creatures will have to hide somewhere. Or maybe they'll just hibernate for a while. Now then, let me find a clean, dry brush. There, and very lightly. We're just gonna sort of fluff this and blend it and bring it all together. I don't wanna, I don't wanna blend it too much. I wanna keep some nice variations going here and there. So it looks like it's a mean sky. All right. There. And that's about all I'm gonna do to that little sky. But isn't that a nice way of making a sky that's very, very different? Very different. And if you're painting for friends or out in public or something, you start off with a canvas like this, and they'll think you're going to have one wild day. I'll tell you what, let's take some Prussian blue and some black, maybe even a little alizarin crimson. Mix them together. Maybe a little more of the crimson. Ooh, that's nice. Pull it out very flat. Really get tough with it. Cut across, get our little roll of paint as usual. Maybe today, I'll tell you what, let's have a Let's have a little mountain that lives right here. Maybe we'll make a, a real jagged little mountain. Maybe there's a lot of little things happening on this mountain. So you just decide what kind of mountain you would like to have in your painting and, and drop it in. It almost looks like the Tetons, so if you wonder, wanted to paint the Tetons, then that's what it is. have a lot of gorgeous jagged peaks and stuff on it. Very nice. Here a couple of years ago a lady in class told me what Tetons meant. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to look that up if you don't already know. Take the old two-inch brush and pull. Just pull. I'm gonna, I want to remove excess paint and blend it downward. There. Sort of let it blend right on out into nothing there. Right out into nothing. Very soft, very gentle. Let's just wash this one. We need a clean brush anyway. And it's a lot of fun to wash the brush. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Okay. 
Let's have some snow on our mountain. We'll have some snow. Pull the titanium white out as flat as we can get it. Then we'll cut across and get our little roll of paint right under the edge of the knife. And let's just begin right up in here maybe. Very gentle, no pressure, no pressure. Just the weight of the knife. Just allow it to glide right over there. Choom. Something like so. You know, occasionally, and I've mentioned this in other shows, but occasionally I get letters saying that my knife looks different than the one that people at home have. The only reason it looks any different is because we take it, we spray it with just flat black paint so that it doesn't glare. But other than that, it's exactly the same knife. The palette, we take and sand it so it doesn't glare, but it's the same. It's just a clear acrylic. There we are. Even the brushes, we have to put tape over the furrows or they would shine and, and be very distracting on TV. But other than that, they're exactly the same. Let's take a little, we'll use that phthalo blue and white. I like it, that's a nice color, so pretty. Make us a little shadow color. And choom, we'll just use a small edge of the knife here and there, or you could just use a small knife. I'm just too lazy to pick it up. Just here and there. I don't want a lot of color back here. I want this to be quite dark, mysterious. A little touch right in there. There, just to give that little valley right in there. Okay. See, you can come back and maybe, maybe there's a peak. Yep, you're right. A little peak lives right there. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. I get letters just about every day, and people say they can't make the snow break here. They're having difficulty with that. It's one of two things, 99 times out of 100. Either the paint that they're using is too thin, because this is a very thick, thick, dry paint and does not like normal oil paints. Or, most common, is that they're applying too much pressure with a knife. Very, very little pressure. Whisper. Clean, dry brush. I want to create the illusion of mist at the base of this mountain. If the big storms come and chances are the clouds are rolling in and there's a lot of mist and as I say, the little creatures, they're looking for a place to hide. Creatures seem to sense when a storm's coming. I lived in Alaska for a lot of years and there's a lot of little earthquakes, little tremors that happen. And I had some beautiful cockatiels, beautiful birds, and you could tell before the tremor hit that it was going to because the birds would the birds would get sort of crazy and they'd start screaming and jumping around their cages and nine times out of ten there'd be a little tremor pretty soon. I'm gonna take a little white, a little thalo blue. I'm gonna have a little clouded. I'm gonna let these clouds literally just come right over the top of the mountains here. Just so there's some nice cl clouds floating right in here covering up the whole base of this. You can tap a little here and there. There they are, just soften it. Okay, now with a clean dry brush, be sure it's clean and dry. We can just sort of stir them up a little and then blend them so that they just set weed back here and that old mountain just lays right in there. Mm. Isn't that neat? Now then, let's have some fun. Let me grab one of my little, little half-size oval brushes. These are half the size of our original oval brushes. I'm gonna go right into that dark color that we made the mountain out of. That's good color. Black, Prussian blue, lizard and crimson. And let's go up in here and let's have some little, some happy little trees that live back here at the base of this mountain. And all we're doing is just tapping, just tapping and lay in some very basic little shapes. I'm not looking for detail, only basic shapes at this time. We'll begin to, to show shape and form when we put the highlights on. This is just the dark, so the light will show. You always have to have dark in order to show light, or light in order to show dark. There. Just like in life, we have to have a little sadness to appreciate the good times. I 
because if everything was good all the time, pretty soon you'd begin just accepting that as, as normal. Once in a while you need, need a little sorrow in your life, probably. There, maybe a little tree up here, wherever. This little brush just makes some of the most gorgeous little tree shapes, very simply. Now yeah, we take a liner brush, dip it in a little paint thinner, <laughs> go right into that same color, doesn't matter. I want to make this thin, almost like ink. And with that, here and there and there and here, we'll put in the indication of a little stick and a twig and trunk, a little place for the birds to sit out here, wherever you think they should be. Even though it's the same color, they'll show up. Now, let's take, I have several of these little oval brushes, little, I mean little round brushes, half size round brushes. I'm going to dip it into a least little amount of the liquid white. Then we'll go right into, this is thalo blue and titanium white. Okay, let's go back up in here. And with that color, we'll come back, see, and just tap. That's all you got to do, just tap. And we can begin adding in all kinds of little highlights onto these trees, make them gorgeous. A lot of times I like to make paintings that are very warm for winter scenes. But I've got numerous letters from people saying they wanted a cold winter scene. This is a cold winter scene. You may have to put your heavy coat on just to paint it. There's a big old tree that lives back in there. But that's all there is to it. Just sort of bury the brush so you get different shapes and forms, whatever you want. Whatever you want. I mix up a little more of the white and the phthalo blue. Ran out of color. There. A little bit, little bit more of the liquid white. And we'll just reload the brush. And there and here and here and there. We can put in all kinds of little things. But just layer after layer after layer. Just as many little doers back here as you want. Now, time for your bravery test. Let's take the old two inch brush and go right into titanium white and load it. Just like you're trying to load it to a chisel edge. Load some color into it. Now in reality, you could use your one inch brush or, or even the fan brush. The two inch brush though is, it, it really works nice. It holds a lot of color and you can get in here, and I want to put some snow back in here. And see, it'll do it very quickly. You can just go right in and drop it in. I want to put the indication of some snow. Very soft and gentle. Tell you what, I'm gonna get a, the full size round brush because I want to do bigger things. I want to do them a little faster here. I'm gonna take the black and the blue, a little bit of the lizard and crimson, load the brush full. In my world, I think I want a big tree right here. Just a great big old happy tree. But notice we put the snow in first so it looks like it's behind the tree. It would be a son of a gun to try to sneak that snow in after you've put this in. Unless you allowed the painting to dry and then you tuck your little tiny one-haired brushes and you snuck in there and done this. This makes it much, much easier. All we're looking for here is just a very basic little shape. Well, this tree keeps growing. Okay, what the heck? What the heck? This tree is as, it's bigger than the mountain. It just indicates it's closer to us. Closer to us. There. And it's, if you painted with me before, you know. <laughs> I always like these big trees in my painting. I think it just helps push everything back and helps achieve that illusion of distance. There. And painting is nothing but games of illusion. Let's go over here on the other side. Maybe, maybe there's another tree over here. Whatever, whatever you think. There, maybe it just goes to here. I don't want to cover up my whole mountain. like something like that yeah, right along in there 
Now then, we'll go back to our little liner brush, a little more of the paint thinner. And this is very thin. Once again, it's almost like ink. Very thin. Turn the brush. This liner brush has very long hair. Turn it so it comes to a nice point, loads a lot of paint into the bristles. Let's go up here. Now then, we can come up in here, and there, and here, and here, and there. Just put the indication of a few little tree trunks. Don't need much. I'm going to put a few highlights on here, so you're not going to see a lot of it. But we know they're there, even if we cover them all up. And it's good practice. And when you practice and learn, it's not wasted. It's never wasted. Let's go on the other side, and we want a few in this little tree right here. Something like that. A little more of the paint thinner, maybe. Here, a lot of times there's limbs that protrude out of the top of old trees that doesn't have anything on them. Maybe part of the tree has died. There we go. Something like that. A little more of the paint thinner. Maybe here's a big old limb. It lives right out over here. You make the decision. You decide. You decide where all these things are. There. These are nice scenes here. I like these old cold winter scenes. I lived in Alaska for a long time, and, and this sort of looks like home to me. All right. Wash the old brush. Let's go back to our little half-size round brush here that has the little blue and white on it. Go to that old big tree over there, and let's put, a, let's put a few little highlights on it, too. We don't want him left out here naked. There we are. Think about shape and form, and begin just putting all kinds of little doers in there. There we go. Put a little more of the liquid white on my brush. If the paint's not sticking well, it's because it's not thin enough. And you put a little touch of the liquid white on there and go back and then, see, it sticks very easily now. Very easy. That's what we're looking for. We want easy painting. There. We don't want to make this any harder than it is. It's too much fun. Painting, painting just makes you happy, so no use making it complicated. Shoot, enjoy it. Enjoy it. There's too many complicated things in our life already. liquid white and you can sort of tell by the touch when you touch the brush if you need a little more or a little less liquid white it'll tell you a little practice and you'll know immediately if the paint's too thick or it's too thin just when you touch the canvas if it doesn't pull right there and the paint will always go to the thickest area in other words if the thickest paint is on the canvas then it'll pull the paint off onto the canvas if the thickest paint's on your brush, then it takes the paint off the canvas onto your brush. So if you're getting a tremendous amount of color on your brush off the canvas, that's all that's wrong. If you remember those little little guidelines, little rules there, then anytime that happens, you know immediately why. It's easy to cure. Easy, easy to cure. A little more of the liquid white. There. See, and we'll just put some little things here. In Alaska, they have ice fog when it gets very cold, and the water molecules in the air actually freeze. But it, the ice fog collects on every little branch, every twig. It looks like crystals. It is the most gorgeous thing you have ever seen. If you've never experienced it, it is beautiful. Cold, but it is gorgeous. Telephone wires get huge looks like trees are in full foliage. It's just, I was born and raised in Florida and I had, I had never seen snow till I was about 20 years old and the Air Force sent me up here, a little white on here. And I think they found out I had never seen snow. And You know, Uncle Sam sometimes has a weird sense of humor. They sent me to Alaska in January. Anchorage, Alaska. And before that I thought, Ice was something that just grew in the refrigerator. I, I didn't know it actually would grow on the ground. And 
I got off the airplane, the first thing I did was slide on the ice, and you know the rest of the story. And everybody thought it was funny. I'm gonna put a little cabin right there, I think. So I'm gonna make some brown. I'm gonna take some sap green and a little bit of the alizarin crimson, about equal parts, mix them together. Just have to, you have to mix this pretty good. Normally we don't mix color very well. This we have to mix pretty good. Okay, easiest way I know to make a little cabin. Take your knife, scrape out a basic shape, something like so. Very basic. You're doing two things here. You're laying the cabin out and you're removing excess paint. But you're not committed. See, that's all you have to do. And we can take a little bit of that brownish color. A little bit of the brownish color. Let's start back here with the back eave. I love this brown color that's made with the green and the crimson. There. See, all we're doing now is just, just laying in color, just blocking it in. There. And you could do this with any old thing. There we go. Now, take a little of that same color. I'm going to add a little white to it. A little bit of white, and then very lightly. Barely touch it, just like laying snow on the mountain. Just barely let it graze and come right down like that. Create the illusion of old wood. Take a little bit of that dark color, come back in here, make it look like there's old planks, old boards, whatever, just by touching. Take a little more of that dark color. We need a door. Got to have a way to get in and out. Pull across like that. Over in here, extremely dark. See almost nothing. But maybe, maybe you can make out. Yep, there's a little window over there. <laughs> now, got to put something on his roof. We'll just use some titanium white. Snow's covered his roof. Snow's a pretty good insulator. So if you got a lot of snow on your roof, keeps you warm. Choom. There we go. Snow's really filled up this one a little bit on the other side, something like that. Then we just do a cabinectomy. In other words, we'll cut it off however we want it. Like so. Shoot. Maybe there's even a little chimney. Yep. Sometimes I don't put chimneys on my cabin and people write and say, why not? Put snow on there. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> Take white, titanium white, and let's just begin filling all this up, something like so. Back to our big old round brush. I'm going to put maybe a yeah, little bush lives right out here, just sort of to help the perspective and everything of the painting, about like that. Back to our little half size round brush. A little, they little blue and white. A few little highlights on there. There. Tell you what, for the people that wanted a cold winter scene, this is cold. Whew. Temperatures went down 20 degrees right in here since we've started this. All right. Okay, now with the white, grab the bottom of this, allow it to pick up a little of that bluish color. So it looks like shadows right behind the bushes. And then begin blending it all together, like so. Back to our liner brush, a little paint thinner, a little bit of light color. Maybe you can see a stick and a twig and just all kinds of little things living back in here. We don't know exactly where they all are, wherever you think they should be. A few little dark things. Shoot, we're about. Look at there. Now then, I'm going to take a little of the thalo blue and white, and I'm just going to tap in some little bushes right over on this side of the cabin, sort of close that side in. Little stick here and there. Put a little something underneath, and I think we're about to have a finished painting. 
It's a very simple little painting. You ought to try it because I think you'll really enjoy it. And you can see what happens with a crazy canvas. So on behalf of the entire staff, I'd like to wish you a happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Today I thought we'd just do a fantastic little painting that I believe you'll enjoy. So I tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And they'll come across right about there. Come on up here, let me show you what I've got done. Today I've taken standard old 18 by 24 pre-stretched canvas, but you use any size as convenient. And I've taken a piece of contact paper and cut an oval out, stuck it on there, then I painted the center with a little bit of black gesso and allowed that to dry totally and completely. On top of the black gesso, I've added a thin, let me say that again, a very thin coat of liquid clear. And I have the canvas totally covered, but I want to remove all the excess. So I'm going to start with just a clean paper towel and I'm going to wipe off every bit of the liquid clear that I can get. It'll still leave this very slick and it'll allow us to move and blend paint. So just wipe off every bit that you can get off. Something about like that. And believe it or not, there's still a coat on here. You might even be able to see it shine and shimmer a little bit, but that's all you need. Now then, on top of that, we can begin playing and just have a good time. I thought today we'd start maybe with a little titanium white and a little phthalo blue mixed together. Just white and blue. Now if we had liquid white on the canvas, we could just use the the pure blue color because it would dilute the blue and make it this color. But since all we have is clear up here, we have to mix our color a little bit on the palette. So I'm just going to take the brush and very gently making tiny, tiny little strokes, little X's, just put in the indication of a little sky here. Don't want a great deal of color, just a little up here. Just a little blue and white. But color stands out so bright against the black there. See, one of the things that I hear over and over from people when they write letters is that they get too much liquid clear on the canvas and it's very difficult to make, it's difficult to make paint stick, to make it work well. So if you'll take a paper towel and wipe all the excess off, there's just enough left, exactly enough left. There. Okay, that's about all we need. Just gonna have a little blue in the sky. I thought today maybe we'd just do a painting that's, maybe it's just pretty, just very pretty. <laughs> Cover everybody for two blocks here. Now if you do that at home, I suggest you get a thing called a brush beater rack. It goes down to the bottom of a waste paper basket and it allows you to shake the, the thinner off into the waste paper basket. Then you beat the brush against that little rack and it'll save you a happy home. There, I'm gonna take a little bit of bright red and titanium white. Just a little of the bright red, very little. It's so strong. Just tap the corner of the brush right into a little of that. There. Now let's just put some, maybe we'll put some just beautiful little clouds that float around up here. I'm just going to use the corner of the brush and begin shaping little clouds. That easy. Just the corner of the brush though, it's all I'm using. Maybe, yep, it comes right down in here. Something like so. And, just sort of floats across the sky. Just let them go wherever you think they should be. There. We're just looking for some nice basic little shapes. It's really about all. There we are. And we'll work in layers here. Okay, a little bit more there. And I tap straight down when I'm loading the brush and then turn it sidewards to paint the clouds. Tap straight down because it opens the bristles. There. Maybe this little cloud just floats right up in here. I don't know. Wherever you want it. And then I have several of each brush going here. Make sure it's good and dry. And very lightly, just using the top corner of the brush, I'm just going to tickle it. Just barely, barely touch it. I'm trying to avoid touching the top edge right now. Just tickle it a little bit. Now, if you want a shadow at the base of your cloud here, all you got to do is blend it a little firmer and the black will show through. And we'll put another layer on and that will become the shadow for your first cloud. I hope all that makes sense. Sometimes I have a hard time explaining things. There we go. It's very gentle though. Just the top corner of the brush. 
tiny little strokes. Tiny, tiny, tiny little strokes. There you go. Something about like that. No. I beat the brush just to knock excess paint off so I don't have to go through the entire cleaning procedure. And then very lightly, we'll just blend that. But isn't that a neat way of making some pretty nice little clouds with very little work? Now then, go back and get a little more of the bright red, a little more of the titanium white. Once again, I'm just going to tap the corner of the brush into the pinkish color. Just tap. Just tap. Okay. Now then, maybe there's layers of clouds here. We can begin forming more and more clouds. Once again, tap straight down and then use the side of the brush. That opens the bristles so they're not stuck together in the chisel edge. Because I want them very fluffy. I want these clouds to be free looking. There we go. Nothing's worse than a stiff cloud. The clouds are very loose. They're free. They just float around and have a good time all day. There we go. Something like so. And you can take these anywhere that you want them. Okay, back to my other brush. Be sure it's nice, clean, and dry. If your brush is wet, you have paint thinner on it, and you go up here and you touch this with a liquid clear underneath, you're going to be in agony city and you're going to be upset with me. Be very sure that your brush is dry as you can get it. If you don't have the facilities to beat it and bang it like we do here, then dry it the best you can and rub it real good against a paper towel or a nice soft rag. There, just blend the base of it out some and very lightly one hair and some air. Just blend it. Just enough to make it nice and soft. Once again, see, automatically we have this nice dark base down here. And you can just keep on and on and on and make as many layers as, as you want. It's up to you. Up to you. Wherever you think a little cloud should live, it's exactly the right place for it. Something comes right down in there. I don't know. Don't know. Just whatever. Okay. I think I'll put some trees in there, so maybe we don't need too many more clouds. There. If you make this many clouds, it'll give you plenty of practice doing clouds in this particular manner. And this is just one of many ways of making clouds. We just try to show you as many ways as possible. And then you try it and you pick the way of making each one of these little things that you like. Because some people will find that this way works great for them. Other people will find that some other way of making clouds works even better. It's very individual. So whatever works for you, that's exactly the one that you want to use. There we are. Okay. See, as I say, I know I'm going to put some trees here, so I'm not worried much about the sides at this point. Let's go up here and let's make us, I'm going to make some brown. I'm going to use alizarin crimson and sap green in about equal proportions. About equal proportions. Mix it up very good. Makes a gorgeous, gorgeous brown color just by mixing those two. So I'll take a little bit of that brown. I mixed a lot because I'm going to use it throughout the painting, I think. I just like that color. A little bit of black, a little bit of the Prussian blue mixed with it. And I'll reach over here and get a little bit of white. I want to lighten it up. Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice color. I like that. All right, let me wipe off the old knife. Now then, I'm going to go right into that color. Load a lot of paint into the bristles. Wiggle that brush. Wiggle it. I want to bring it to a nice, sharp chisel edge. Wiggle it and then sharpen it. Look how sharp you can make that. Mm. Okay. Now then, maybe up here, this is a simple, simple way of making some nice trees. Just take the brush and give it a little sideways push. There you can make the other side. See? That's sneaky, huh? It's a beautiful way of making little delicate trees that live far, far away. Little distant trees that don't have a lot of detail in them. Just using the brush sideways. 
And you can put as many or as few in your world as you want. Maybe down in here there's a few more. There, there, and there. And there and here and just everywhere. Make all kinds of happy little trees. There. And when you make these people come along and look at your painting, they'll never believe you made all these little trees with a two-inch brush. Shh, that's our secret. Don't tell them. <laughs> there. That's one of the things that I hear over and over again in letters that people write me. They'll say they, they did a painting and they showed it to their family and friends and, and nobody believes they done it. And I bet that's if you painted and showed your paintings after, after they were dry and everything and you, the people will say, you didn't do that. Where's the numbers? <laughs> Somebody else did that. But you know you did. There. Something maybe about like so. Now I'm going to create the illusion of a little mist down here. This, this brush still has a little white on the bottom. I'll tap a little of that. Now, with a clean brush, I just want to blend this together. That'll create a, an illusion of mist right down at the base. Something about like that. You can lift upward. But isn't that a nice way of making some little distant tree shapes that are very, very simple? You can do that. You can do that. Make another layer because layers in a painting, as you've heard me say so many times, creates the illusion of depth. Makes your painting look deep. So to do that, I'm going to use the same color, only I'm going to darken it a little. Okay, now then, maybe there's some little bushy things that live right here. I'm just using the top corner of the brush. But see, that little misty area becomes your separator. It's your good friend. It's what separates the layers. Between the misty area and the darker color, that's what separates. There we go. Mm. Okay, maybe we'll put a few more over here. What the heck? And once again, I'm going to tap a little bit of that lighter color in. Something about like that. And very lightly lift upward. Just enough to sort of blend it together. Once again, creates that illusion of mist. There. Now then, let's get crazy. You know me, I like to, I like to paint trees and stuff like that. And so see how many different ways we can come up with. Let's use the old two inch brush. What the heck, we'll make some trees back here in the background. I'm using the same colors, blue, black, and that brown that we made from crimson and sap green. Only darker, each time a little darker. Okay, let's go back up here. Maybe in our world there lives a little tree right there. Now, if the two inch brush scares you, you can do this with a fan brush or the one inch brush. It doesn't matter. I just have it going here and it's dirty, so might as well put the little rascal to use. There. If you're doing paintings, demonstrations for friends, the two inch brush always excites people because they, they just don't believe you can paint such delicate little things using a brush this big. Let's go on the other side here and put in a couple little, little happy trees, maybe. Yep, about right there. Just make a decision and drop the little devil in there. There. Nice place for my little creatures to live up in that tree. I like that tree. Just using the corner of the brush initially, and as you work down the tree, add more pressure, bend the bristles harder, and it'll make the branches wider, larger, bigger, automatically. Automatically. Let the brush work for you. Let the brush work for you. Maybe there's an old leaner over here. If you've painted with me before, you know I like old trees that sort of have some character, not just future telephone pole. <laughs> there. There. See, each layer now just creates that illusion of depth in your painting. Maybe, right, there's one more. Just however many you want in your world. Drop them in. Drop them in. Don't be afraid of it. 
because you can do this. You can do anything that you believe you can do. Maybe there's a few more little bushy areas right in here. Something about like that. All right. Now, I'll take the brush with a little bit of white, a little bit of that brown color we made. You just want to put the indication here and there of a few little tree trunks that you can see. I don't want a great deal of detail. These are, they're sort of back away, so not too much detail. Just enough to give the indication that there's some trunks in there to hold that old rascal up. Soup. There we go. Now then, and I just use that same old brush. I'm gonna go right into a little bit of the yellow ochre and the cad yellow. Reach over and get a little Indian yellow once in a while. Mix various colors on the brush though. I want a dark green. Maybe I'll reach up in here. Ooh, that's nice. I'll get a little black. That'll make it dark. Very dark. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Now then, let's put just a touch of highlight on this tree. Still just using the corner of the two-inch brush. Just the corner. There. As I say, sometimes people have a tendency to be afraid of this because it's so big. When Annette and I, we used to travel all over the country and teach people that was one of the things that we would get students to do, is to use this brush. And once they got over the, the fear of it, they couldn't believe what you could do with it. But you have to get over that. It sort of intimidates you, because it's so big. There. Just a few on these. Don't want them left out. And that one in my mind's in the background. I'm not gonna put any on it. I want it to stay wee back here. Sometimes it's better to leave some of them just the way you paint them so they look like they're far, far away, way back in the background. Now then, while we have that old brush go and shoot, that's working pretty good there. Let's get crazy. Maybe, tell you what, maybe there's a nice little grassy area right there. There it is. All we're doing is tapping. Still just using that same old green color. Just tapping yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cad yellow, and here and there, the least little touch of the bright red. And the bright red acts as a duller. It makes the color dull because grid, red and green make brown. There. Something about like that. Now, it's fun sometimes to, to make a a bright spot in your painting. I'm going to take a little titanium white right on that same brush and just sparkle like there's a little light zinging right through there. Just sparkle a little bit. Mm. Now don't overdo this or you'll kill the effectiveness of it. Just a little. Just a little. It gets it gets feeling good and you want to do it all but but it'll absolutely kill the effect. So be conservative with it. Let's wash that old brush. Start with some new dark color here. <laughs> I just like to beat the brush. That's really the fun part. Let's get, let's go back into the black and the Prussian blue and the very dark colors. I want more of the black and blue, just a very little bit of brown here. I want to change the flavor a little bit, but I'm loading it back to a nice chisel edge. Nice chisel edge. Okay, let's go back up in here. In our world, maybe there's a darker tree that's a little closer to us. There he is. A little more into the blue hue. Blue hue. I'd make a nice song. There we go. All right, maybe there's a big old tree. It lives. We don't even know where it lives. Just got some arms that are coming right down in here. Something like that. We don't know. Don't know that we even care. I don't know that we even care. I'll take that same brush, go right back into our greens and yellows. And just come right along in here. Maybe I'll make it a little brighter so it'll stand out. Cat yellow. Mmm, that's better. Now we can see it against that other one. There, just change its flavor a little. Something like so. Okay, let's do the other one over here. Mm -hmm. There. Don't be afraid of this old two-inch brush. Use that rascal. 
You can do entire paintings with it very easily. Very easily. You know what? I just had a brainstorm. <laughs> we got a minute or two left here. Maybe in my mind, I see. Yep. What if we had a little cabin lived right out here in the woods? This would be such a fantastic place to live and watch all the little creatures. And let's just do that. What the heck? Take some of that brown color that we made. Start with the back eave. Choop, choop. Now we can do the front. Choom. Well, all we're doing is just blocking it in here. All we're just basically laying color down. We're still not committed at this point. We'll take a little yellow ochre, a little bit of that brown color, a little white. Just sort of mix them together. Come right along and say, choo. We'll make this look like old wood. Something like something. We'll make a log cabin. Doesn't much matter. Take a little dart. Put some doo 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 right across there. And then maybe the logs come here. A little bit of brown. See there? Little brown and white. Then we come along, put a little highlight on some of those logs. So all we have to do on the other side, it's much darker over here. There's not much light here. Just the least little hint. Something like so. Now we need a roof on that house. Otherwise, that fellow that lives there, boy, he's in for it. And let's take some black and some white and like a nice grayish color. And I'll use the little edge of the knife. It will just come right here. We'll make it look like there's a few old shingles still hanging on this roof. It's an old cabin. There. Work in layers, starting at the bottom and working up, just like you put real shingles on a house. There. Years ago, I used to be a carpenter. <laughs> I guarantee you, it's not this easy to shingle a roof. My friend Dana Chester, who's one of our instructors that you've probably seen before, he was a carpenter also before he became an instructor. Shoot, that rascal travels all over the country now. Teaches literally thousands of people the joy of painting. Let's have a door in our cabin right there. And let's have a window, something like so. Maybe just a little indication we can see the end of some logs. A little touch of highlight right around the edge. Some around the window. Nobody's home. <laughs> no lights on. No lights on. All right, let's just, we'll find a two inch brush. It's halfway clean. Tap a little more of our grassy color in there. And let's just start putting all kinds of little layers of grass right up around like that. Maybe this is a nice little meadow he lives in out here. There. Sometimes it's fun to, to play some little games here. Watch here, watch here, watch here. We got a second left. Maybe there's a hill right here that's sort of overlooking this whole thing. So we put some dark color in first. And we come back with our lighter colors, the highlight colors. And we begin forming this. Just a little hill right here. See there? There we go. Just enough so it stands up. Maybe even, tell you what, take a little of that brown color we made. Maybe there's even a little path that comes up this hill. Take a little white, right on top of that brown, give it a little highlight. A little grass area on this side, just to sort of bring it all together. See now he walks down and goes back into his little house here in Little Vacation. There. That's a nice place for live. Now, let's take our little liner brush, little liner brush and paint thinner. We we'll go right into our good brown color we made. Want this paint to be thin like ink. 
very thin. Maybe we got a big tree that lives right here. Great, big, nice tree. There. And he's got a big arm that comes over here. Maybe an old crookedy one right there. A little highlight color is just a little, a little brown and white. Come down and just make it so it stands out a little. Blend it in. Just wanting to stand out a little. There. And we can put all kinds of little arms on here. Wherever you think they should live. It's exactly where they should be. There. I tell you what. Let's take the old contact paper off and see what we got. That's the moment of truth. So we'll just grab it, pull it off, and take a little look-see there. And what's fun, <laughs> watch here, I like to let things extend out of the borders. Let this old tree just sort of grow right on up. His arms just come right on out of this oval. Something like that. There they go. Wherever you think they should be. I like these paintings where part of, the, part of the painting breaks the borders. It really gives a very nice effect. Hope you try these. I think you'll find them just fantastic. And with that, I think we'll call that one finished. Hope you've enjoyed it. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today I think we'll really do a fantastic painting. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, but today I've covered the entire thing with black gesso, as you, can, as you can plainly see. Then I've taken a little bit of liquid clear, very, very small amount. I've covered the entire canvas with it, and then we've taken a paper towel and wiped all of it off that we can get. There's still enough left on here to do what we want to do. You can feel it with your fingers, but it's not so much that you can't paint on it, because it's, it's very easy to get too much. So let's just do a let's just do a happy little painting day. I'm gonna start off maybe with a little titanium white and a little bit of phthalo blue. We'll just mix them with a brush. Just mix them with a brush. Let's go right up in here. And we can go right up in here using little crisscross strokes. And let's just put in a little sky. I thought maybe today we'd do one of the little paintings that you see at the opening that the that the little the little painter man just sort of pops in there with his with his magic brush. There. That's a cute little, cute little animation. Well, it only takes a couple of minutes to watch it, but it takes a lot of fantastic people a long time to make it. There. That's a brainchild of one of our engineers here at the station named Jerry Morton. It's really gorgeous. There we go. And that's about all we need for that. Let me wash the old brush. Now this won't be an exact duplicate of what you see at that little opening, but it'll be close enough to show you how it was made. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's start and put in some happy little clouds. Today I'm going to use just the corner of the brush, a little bit of titanium white. I'll be right back. And a little bit, a very small amount of yellow ochre. Just a small amount. Tap a little color right into the top corner of the brush here. Just a little. Okay, let's go up here. Now we just have to start thinking about some very basic little cloud shapes. Just basic little shapes. And all I'm going to do today is tap. In this series, I've tried to, tried to show some very, very simple ways of making gorgeous clouds and some other effects. And this is one of them. Just tapping. There. A little yellow ochre, a little bit of titanium white. That's really all we need. Okay. But you need to you need to put in a very basic shape. Just don't tap at random and, and think a little cloud will appear. You sort of have to have a basic idea of where you want the little cloud to live. There, maybe in between those, I'm going to have several layers of clouds. I'm going to put a little lavender color. We'll make that with a little lizard and crimson and phthalo blue. And we'll just mix it also on the brush. And we'll just sort of tap it in right here. Then I'll blend them all together. Okay, I have several of each brush, so I don't have to spend all my time just washing brushes, though that is fun. 
Now just the top corner, barely, barely touching the canvas, we'll begin to blend, making little X's, little crisscrosses. Barely touching, barely, barely touching. Whisper light. Just caress the canvas a little tiny, tiny bit. There. Okay, now we can just gently blend it all together. Something like so. Fluff it a little, wiggle it. There. Okay, and that easy. We have a happy little cloud. Now then, I want several layers of clouds. So we'll go back to our little brush that has a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of the white on it. There we go. Just tap it again. Same way. Same identical way. Now then, we'll start up in here. And let's just tap in another layer. And in your world, you put as many or as few clouds as you want. It's totally and completely up to you. You are the master of this canvas, and you can do anything here. Anything that you want to do. Of course, I'm a firm believer that you can do anything in life that you believe you can do. Not just on this canvas, but anything. As long as you believe. There. Okay. Something like that. Once again, we're just looking for some very basic little shapes and wherever. But see, the dark comes through and automatically makes your shadows. You don't even have to worry about it. Automatically it'll happen. This is truly the lazy man's way of painting. <laughs> there. And I look for very easy ways to make things work and, and be effective. Okay. All right. Now, once again, back to my clean, dry brush. And I just want to gently, gently, gently blend. Tiny little strokes, though. I can't emphasize that enough. Tiny little strokes. You make big ones, it's going to... You're going to lose a lot of the illusion. Tiny little strokes. And at home, when you have a lot of time, you can really take your time and, and make these little bitty strokes, and you'll be amazed, absolutely amazed, at the effects that you can achieve. And you clearly can. You really can. There. Okay, we'll fluff this one up a little. Just blend it, bring it all together. There. Just make all kinds of effects. Okay. Something about like so. But already you've made several layers of cloud and done very little. Basically, all you've done is just tap a little bit. Okay. Now then. I think that painting had a nice mountain in it. It was mostly, mostly done in very warm, warm brown tones. Now, sometimes I like to make a brown. And to do that, then I'll just go ahead and mix up a pile of it. I'll use it throughout the painting. We'll start with a alizarin crimson and sap green in about equal parts. About equal parts. You can shift this brown to the greenish side or to the reddish side. Depends on your mood or what you're trying to accomplish. So it's up to you, totally and completely up to you. Today I think I'm going to sort of have it to the reddish side a little bit. A little bit to the reddish side. Okay, and mix it quite well. There we go. Okay, let me clean off the old knife. Just wipe the knife on a little paper towel. And we'll cut off our little roll of paint and let's come right up in here. We want a big mountain that lives right here. So if we come in here, and just start, maybe as a peak there. Just let your imagination take you there. Whatever you would like. You just put, there's all kinds of little lures in there. Wherever you want. Maybe over in here. Okay, now we just, we just literally lay in some color here. Put a little thing back in the background. There we go. As Steve, my son, says, we'll just mush in a little color down there. There we go. Now I'm just taking off all the excess. The only reason I did this is because we have nothing but clear under here, and I need a little color underneath. Normally, we have a transparent color when we use black canvases, but today all we have is the clear. So now we have a little color under there, so when we put things in and blend them, it'll have a color to pick up. There we go. 
large brush, we just blend that out a little. There we go. And you can make any kind of mountain that you want. Today I think I'll make one, just a big old raggedy mountain. It has a lot of character. And maybe, I'll tell you what, let's have the light coming from the left side today. I'm right-handed, so I have a tendency, I have a tendency to normally have the light coming from the right side. And my left-handed friends sometimes write and say, why don't you do one with coming from the left? So let's do that. I shake off, beat the old brush. All right. Now then I'm gonna take, first I'm gonna take and clean off the spot to work in. Take some white, some of that brown color that we made with the alizarin crimson and sap green. There we go. Something about like that. But I want to leave this not mixed very well. Maybe I'll put at least a little touch of yellow ochre in there too. Ooh, I like that. That's better. Okay, now cut off our little roll of paint. And we can go up in here and very lightly, very lightly touch. Let it run right down the mountain. Just let it run right down. Follow those angles. Follow those angles. See them? There they come. And up in here. There, we let this whole mountain just, just run right off your knife. There. Wherever, doesn't matter. You make your mountain any way that you want it. Any old way that you want it. Something like that. Shoot, there might be things out in here. But apply no pressure, and that way this paint will break. I know you hear that over and over and over. But it's really what makes these mountains work so well is the fact that they have all these holes in them. All right, need a shadow color for that. I'm gonna take white, a little thalo blue. I'm gonna add a little crimson to that, make sort of a, sort of a lavendery color. There. Just, ooh, that's, oh, I like that. See, I don't want to overmix it. I want to leave these variations in there because when you pick it up on the knife, they're still there. And let's go up in here. Those little variations will make all kinds of little pretties up there in your shadows. See, so let them go. See the variations? They're there. They're right there. They don't go away and leave you. They remain there. Okay, we need some shadows right in here. Mm. Well, this is one big old strong mountain here. He lives here. He has a view and a half. There. A few little doors in there. Something like so. All right. Tell you what, maybe. Yep. See, we can make a whole new angle right there just by doing that. Looks like there's another protrusion right here. But when you're making mountains, just play with them. Make all kinds of little things. Let your imagination go. And just sort of let the knife and canvas work for you. There. All right. Now then, let me take a clean, very dry, two inch brush. And I want to mist the base of this just a little bit, just by tapping. Just tap, follow the angles. Most, most important that you follow those angles most important. There we go. Lift upward. Upward, upward, upward. See how that creates that illusion of mist down at the base? Let me knock off any paint that I've picked up and we'll do the same over here in the shadow area. There we go. All right. Once again, lift upward. There we go. Over in here. Tap a little. Lift up in this direction. This part back here, I'm going to leave basically like it is, so it looks like it's far back in the distance, long way off. Long, long way off. We don't even know where it's at. Don't know that we even care. All right. I think that gives us a pretty nice little mountain. Tell you what. Let me grab one of the little half-size oval brushes, and I'm going to make... Let me clean off another spot I can work here. I'm going to make a... I'm going to take some Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. Prussian blue and alizarin crimson. I want to make a, a lavender color. I use the Prussian blue because it's darker. It gives it a little, 
a little different than the phthalo blue. Stronger, darker, a little different flavor. Oh, that's nice. Now then, now then, let's take our little little half size round brush, and back here in the distance in our world, there lives some happy little trees all back in here. See there? There they come. All I'm doing right now is putting on some dark color. So later on, when we put some highlights in here, it'll show. Maybe there's a nice little tree. Yep, right there. Right there. There he is. Just dark so our light will show. That's really all we're doing. All we're doing. There. Right on over. We don't know where that goes. I'm going to put a tree, I think, right there. Okay, now I have a couple of these little brushes. So once again, I don't have to spend all the time washing them. I'm going to take a little sap green, a little cad yellow, mix them together. Right on the brush. Let's go up in here. Maybe this little bush right here. Oh, look at that. Look how color stands out against that dark background. It just stands out. Mm. I mean, it's almost unreal. It excites you when you see this happen. The white canvases are gorgeous, but these black canvases, oh my gosh, do they stand out. It's almost unbelievable how fantastic they look. There, put all kinds of little doers in there. Like that. We don't know where that goes. There's another bush in front of it. But we work in layers. This layer back here, I'm gonna leave dark. This one, nice and bright and shiny. And we'll work forward. I want a little grassy area. Take a little bit of that mountain color, just some of the old mountain colors left there, and go right into my yellow, sap green, little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow now and then. And occasionally I'll touch a little bright red just to add a little flavor to it. Good, let's go up here. I want a little grassy area right in here. So I'm just gonna take and tap. Begin thinking about the lay of the land. Look at there though, against that dark, See, we don't even have to put anything down there. There's enough liquid clear. Even though you wiped it hard with a paper towel, there's still enough left that the paint mixes well. And it's slick enough that it slides when you want it to slide. There we go. Maybe there's a little meadow back here. I'm even going to add the least little touch of titanium white to the brush. I want to put the, indica yeah, the indication of a little bright area right here. Maybe. Maybe the light's just zinging through there. and <clears throat> That's the place I'd want to take off my shoes and let my feet run naked through there. There. Okay. Yeah, tell you what, let me wash my little oval brush, a little round brush. Hmm, it's not as much fun to beat as a big one. I don't get anybody off camera that's dodging and carrying on like this. Now then, I'm going to go into a little bit of the cad yellow. And then right into some bright red. Let's have a firecracker up here. Maybe even yellow ochre too on a, something about like that. I want this little tree here. I want it to really stand out. Mm. So that's mainly, well actually it's mainly yellow ochre and bright red. Loads a little more color. Mm. Boy, this will be a little firecracker here. Something about like that. Just want a nice little red bush in this painting. Maybe like that. Take our little liner brush. A little bit of light color. And we can put the indication of a few little sticks and twigs that live in this little tree. Maybe there's even a few back in here somewhere. I don't know. Wherever you want them. Wherever. Now. Let me find a, we'll use a fan brush. We'll load it full of color. I think I want, let's go right up here. I want, I want right there, a nice evergreen tree. Use the corner of the brush, just work back and forth and forth and back. Let it work right down, like so. I'm still using the same color that I used to, to make the background for those little trees back here. It's mostly a lavender type color. 
just because it was handy. You could make something in the dark greens. It would work just as well. It's up to you. Up to you. I just want a nice dark color here. There. Let's have him a little friend. You know me. I think everybody should have a friend. At least one. At least one. And preferably two or three. And we'll put some little bushes right in here using a little round brush. Maybe right down like that. Who knows? And let me wash this little brush. As I say, that one's not near as much fun. Nobody back here is dodging or anything. I like it when everybody sort of runs and hides. And <laughs> anyway, it's a lot more fun. Now, maybe right in here, we have some little bushes that live in here. I'm just going to use the various yellows, a little bright red now and then. And with that, we'll pop in. Oh, there's a nice little orangey. See, little surprises just sort of happen. It's just sort of happen. Work in layers, one at a time. Don't get greedy. One at a time. There I go. All kinds of little doers. There we are. Tell you what we need. Let's take some of that nice brown color that we had and come right in here. And, and I'm just putting some brown in there, so maybe there's some, maybe we can see some dirt here and there. Some rocks and stones, some nice soil areas. Whatever, whatever. We'll take a little of that same brown and some titanium white, mix it together. Don't over mix. I'll put a little touch here and there of the bright red, little yellow ochre in it. Now, very lightly, just like you do in the mountain. Just sort of let that float along, barely, barely touching, barely touching. Oh, look at there. Isn't that gorgeous? It really stands out against that dark, dark color. And we can come back and make it look like a lot of little stones and rocks and things that are happening in there, just all over the place. Back to our little round brush. A few little bushes and sticks and weeds and little grassy areas and all the little things that live around there, like so. There. You know, I get a lot of letters, people asking about my easel, if they can find an easel like the one that I use. Uh, this is just made out of an old platform ladder. But so many people have asked, I think pretty soon we'll, we'll have a, I've designed a new easel, which is fantastic. And it'll be out soon. But this one's just an old ladder. You can make one at home. You can make one at home, doesn't matter. Now then, let's take a little blue and crimson, lavender color in other words, and just put a little color right here. Just a little color. There we go. A little bit of titanium white on the same brush. I want to make this look like a happy little stream right here. Pull straight down. Straight down. Something about like so. And then go across. And we have instant water with all the colors just reflected right into it. There. Need a little green and a little yellow. And let's go up in here and just throw some highlights right on this big evergreen tree. Something about like that. There. Okay, there goes another one. All right. Now on the other side, let me find a big round brush. Shoot. We had a big tree over here on the other side. I'm going to add a little black to that color. I want it to get strong, a little black. So I have lavender with a little bit of black color in it. And let's just let this big old tree just grow right out of the brush. Just let it grow right out of the brush. There it comes. See? There it comes. Something about like that. And that helps push that whole mountain back into the distance. But you never knew a tree could push a mountain, but it can. It can. I tell you what, we'll just let it come right on out here. It's 
something about like that. There we go. Come back, pick up a little brown. We'll turn that into a, a nice little bank just by putting some brown right there. Back to all of our little colors like we used on the other side. Just pop in a little color there. Maybe it comes right down. Okay. Back to our little brown brush with all the little colors on it, the greens and the yellows. Put in some happy little bushes right down here hanging over. See them? See them? They're there. They're there. They live right there. Right there. The old two inch brush. Put in some little grassy areas all down here at his foots. There. See, it just runs right down the edge, right on off the canvas. That easy. Tell you what, while we have that brush, I'm going to take some of that brown color and mix it with yellow ochre. It's just, well, I know, I know what I want to do. Hmm. Got ahead of myself. I want to put a trunk in that old tree. Let's go right here. Take a little of that brown, run on the fan brush. There it is. Take my knife, a little brown and white, come back. Let me just add a little touch of highlight here and there. 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 Just a little highlight here and there. There. See there? That easy. We have the indication of a nice little trunk. Now we'll use that brown color we made mixed with yellow ochre. I'm going to put a little touch of liquid white just to thin it. Let's come back here and drop in some nice little highlights all over this tree. Some nice little leaves that are living up in here. There they come. There. Just all kinds of little doers. But isn't that opening cute at Jerry Main? All those all those little things just popping right out of nowhere. <laughs> I enjoy doing those. I really enjoy doing those. They're a lot of fun. There we go. Okay. See, there they come. Just all kinds of little things on this tree. We covered up most of our trunk, but we know it's there. So that's all that matters. We know it's there the brush into a little bit of paint thinner and right in here yeah I want to put a little some little bushes right around his little foots there to hold him in and we'll about we'll about have a finished painting shoot we could take our little liner brush put in a little stick and a twig here and there and we'd be all done just a few of those something like that I think we'll call that a finished painting. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. It'll give you a challenge. And from all of us here, happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting that I think you'll enjoy. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got going up here today. Today I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas and I've just covered it with a thin, even coat of the liquid white. And as you know, the liquid white is there just to make the canvas slick, so we can literally blend the color right up here on the canvas. So let's start out today with a little two-inch brush and just see what we can do. I'm gonna take a little bit of the phthalo blue, just take, pull a little bit of it out, very small amount, and just tap the bristles into it. This assures a nice, even distribution of color all the way through the bristles, and that's what we're looking for. So let's go right up in here. Maybe we'll just start up here and just make little crisscross strokes. There. And the blue is continually mixing with the liquid white so you get all the different variations. And it's very slick and it just, it slides right onto the canvas. There, let me get a little more of the color. We'll go over here on the other side and put some over here. We don't want it left out. All right. Just making little X's though, little crisscross strokes. Something about like that. Tell you what, maybe, maybe today we'll put a little cloud in there. I'm just gonna leave a little area sort of open and that'll end up being a little, little cloud maybe. There we go. Now then, while I have that old color on the brush, let's have a little water in this painting. If you've painted with me before, you know that 
Water is one of my favorite subjects, and I hope it is yours. So let's let's take that same blue and come from the outside inward toward the center, like so. We'll have a, mm, somewhere down here. We don't really care. Anything that we don't like, we'll just cover it up. Let's go on the other side, pull from the outside in. There. Now, if we leave a, a little area unpainted right in here, it'll look like a sheen of light coming across the water. There we go. Now then, one thing that I'd like to do in this painting is darken the edges a little bit so it brings your eye into the center of the painting. For that, I'm going to use a little phthalo blue, or I'm sorry, a little Prussian blue. Prussian blue is a darker blue. There. Put a little bit right over in the corners here. I'm going to put a little bit in, basically in all four corners just to darken the corners up. Once again, that, that will help bring everything, when you're looking at it, in toward the center. All right, a little bit in the water also. <laughs> we don't want him left out. There we go. Just a little. Over here, a little bit in there. Now then, let's wash the old brush. That's the fun part of this whole technique. The scrubber brush with odorless paint thinner. Ah, and shake it off and <laughs> just cover the whole room. Just cover the whole room. That really is the fun part of this. Now with a clean, dry brush, I just want to begin blending this. I'm going to start in the light area and blend outward toward the dark area. That way we'll retain the dark out on the outside edges. Now, you can just beat the brush to knock off excess paint that you pick up, and you don't have to go through the whole cleaning procedure again. There, something about like that. On the bottom, just very gently go all the way across. Something like so. And we're ready. Now then, today let me show you just a very simple, easy little way of making some very effective clouds. I'm going to use another two inch brush, it's clean. And I'm just going to tap the corner, just tap the corner, you can see it there, into a little bit of the titanium white. Okay. Now then, using that same corner and just the corner of the brush, I'm just going to tap in some very basic little shapes. Just tap. Just tap. And the more you tap, the more diffused it will become. So you have to make a decision about how much you want or how little that you want. And this is a very individual way of painting. Since we use no tracings or no patterns, everybody's going to see it a little bit different. And that's what makes it wonderful. You don't want to just copy what somebody else has done. Shoot. There. But see how easy that is? All you have to do is just tap. <clears throat> a little bit right in here. Maybe we'll have a huge cloud. This is a nice way of making clouds for big seascapes where you want where you want the big fluffy clouds out over the water. Okay, and you can put all kinds of little colors in there. Shoot, let's take a little tiny, tiny amount of Indian yellow. Just a very small amount. Just to give a little sparkle, maybe a little sunlight. Right in there. There, we'll get a least little touch of alizarin crimson. Least little touch. But you can put all kinds of little flavors in your clouds, all kinds of little colors. We just sort of let that disappear right on off into there somewhere. We don't care. But think about basic shapes here. Just don't hit it random. And the more you tap, once again, the more diffused it becomes. The softer. You can make clouds that are very distinct this way, or just very, very soft that you hardly see. They almost blend into the sky. Now I'm going to take a little, I'm going to take a little thalo blue and a little lizard crimson. Just mix them on the brush. Very, very small amount. Very small amount. And I'm just tapping once again. Maybe at the base of this little cloud here, we'll just put in a little bit of color. Something. And I'm going to tap and blend all that together. Just a little right in here. Okay, now let me wash the old brush. <laughs> I just like to wash the brush. All right. <laughs> Shake it off and we'll cover the whole crew again. Now, very gently, you can just tap and bring all these colors together. So 
something like so. There. I want this cloud to sort of just disappear over here. So the more you tap, once again, the more diffused it'll become, the softer, the more gentle, until it just disappears. Now then, where the brush is clean and dry, very lightly, just tickle it. Just sort of make little tiny, using the top corner, little tiny crisscross strokes. Just enough to sort of blend it together. And it softens everything even more. There we are. Now then, very, very, very gently, we're just going to fluff it, lift it, blend it. There, we got a little hair on there. We'll just take the corner of the brush and lift him off. But isn't that a fantastic way of making a gorgeous little cloud? And it's very easy. Even if you've never painted before, this one you can do. All right. I thought today we'd make some, some little ranges of mountains. I've had quite a few requests for little mountains that are soft and far, far away. And I want to show you an extremely easy way to do it here. I'm going to mix some phthalo blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson. Not much. I want this to stay mostly blue. A little white with it. I want to make a, basically I'm making a light blue with just a, just a hint of lavender in it. Something about like that. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go right up in here. And maybe back over in here we have a little mountain that lives way back, something like that. There. Very little paint. And then scrape the canvas just as firmly as you can. Take off all the excess. And we'll use a two inch brush. It's clean and dry. And you grab it and you pull. Because the liquid whites on the canvas the paint will move. It will literally slide on there. And then we can just blend the base of it out until it looks like it's just sort of floating around in the sky. And that's what really makes it pretty. You always have mist at the base of the mountain. And that's exactly what we're looking for. I'm just knocking off the excess paint. And then you can blend the entire thing very easy. And you can blend this to any degree of softness that you want. There, that old mountain just sits up there in the clouds and it really has a view and a half. Okay, and that's about all I'm going to do to that one. Because if you put a lot of detail, then it's not going to look like it's far away. It's going to be, come closer and closer. Same color, just be a crimson, phthalo blue and white. But now I'm going into a little more of the crimson. This has a little more purplish hue. A little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Come right up in here. Let's come right here and do another one, right in there. We have a little mountain now that lives right about there. This one's a little darker and a little more into the lavender hue. And you put as many bumps and ridges as you want on there. It's up to you. This piece of canvas truly is your world. And in your world, you have total power. See? Once again, scrape off all the excess paint. The canvas is stained. You, you couldn't get that off if you wanted to now. So don't worry about taking all the paint off. I don't believe you could if you, if you scraped all day. There. And once again, we'll begin pulling that out. But on this one, I want to begin leaving some indications that there's highlights and shadows. It's a little closer, so maybe there's a little detail. And you can do that just with the brush strokes. Just using brush strokes, all it takes. You really don't have to do another thing other than the brush strokes. There, brush strokes, that's the name of our newsletter. That's a lot of fun because in the newsletter I'm allowed to, to, to talk and write about things that I'm not here and I have unlimited time. There, but see how that sort of gives the indication that you can see things happening in that mountain without doing a thing. There. Now then, shoot, let's get crazy. We got a spot over here. I want to take a little bit more of the blue and the crimson, same colors, same colors, more into the lavender hue now, but darker. Each layer should get darker. 
fact, you can add a little midnight black in there if you really wanted to, to make it darker. If you've, if you've put white in there and you want to save that color, our little roll of paint, once again. Let's go right up in here. And maybe, maybe, got to make a big decision. Maybe there's a taller one that lives right there. And it's up to you. Really and truly is up to you. There. You just make them wherever you want them. There. This is a nice way of doing the mountains and stuff that are in the Carolinas and all up through there. They are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Especially up around Asheville, North Carolina. Ooh. You could get crazy there. But this is a very simple way of indicating those type of mountains. Once again, our large brush and pull. Just pull it. But notice that it's darker. That's so important. I know you get tired of hearing me say that. But if each layer does not get darker as it gets closer to you, you'll lose that illusion of distance and depth in your painting. As you know, I'm sort of a fanatic for having distance in the painting, depth in it. Okay, once again, we can pull to create those illusions of highlights and shadows in there. And sometimes you can take a little bit of the original color. Maybe I'll even add a little more black to it to make it a little darker. Maybe you want to emphasize a little thing here and there. Maybe there's another little thing, little peak right here in the foreground. And you can do that just by adding a little color and here and there you can put a few little things. These are closer to you so you would see more. And once again, take the big brush, grab it, and just pull it. You're basically only worried about this nice top edge. That's what really makes it work. There. Something about like that. Okay. I'm just going to take that brush and tap it right into the mountain color. Maybe, maybe there's a tree line or where the trees grow up the side of the mountain here that we can see. So very lightly, we can just tap. Just tap like that. I want this to be a little fuzzy on the top and then blend downward. Then you can lift slightly upward. And it'll make it look like little trees that live on the side of the mountain. Wee, wee far away back here. Somewhere back in the distance. We don't even know where it's at. It's a secret little place there. It's a place where all the little creatures hide. There we go. There. And sometimes you can, watch here, you could just take this brush, form a whole nother little doer. Let your imagination take you wherever you want to go. I think that's what's so fantastic about painting is that you can create any kind of world that you want here. It's up to you. There's no boundaries here. That's the reason I have so many young friends that paint. Children have the, the most fantastic imaginations in the world. They're not restricted. They can do anything. There. Something about like so. And you can do layer after layer. Look at all the depth. This. Watch, 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 watch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get, I get carried away sometime with this. But it's exciting when you paint. You begin seeing so many things. So many things. There. See? Another whole plane. But now maybe this is getting closer to us and we, we're getting to the point now where we can make out a little color. A little color. So I'll just take that same color and go into a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of cad yellow. Maybe even get a little sap green on the brush. Just tap that right in there too. Maybe a little more of the green. Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. Let's go back up here. And maybe, yes, right there. Right there, look. A little bit of color. Greenery's growing all here and there. Beautiful little foothill that lives right down here at the base of this mountain. See, I want my cabin right back there so I can, I can look up and see all of these gorgeous things. Because you know when you look across a range of mountains like that, Certainly God was having a good day when he made it. And what's left on the brush? Very little here. You can just take and put the indication of a hint of color back in here. I don't want a great deal, just a hint. Just a hint. 
a hint of green. There we are. Okay. But there's a tremendous amount of depth in there now. You can see back, all the way back to, to forever, right there. Now let's reflect some of those back into our water. And I'll just use a little fan brush for that. I just want to show you quickly how to, how to reflect some of those little things. Let's start with the fan brush. It has mostly thalo blue on it. And let's go back to this first one here. And we're just going to put in a, a little basic shape idea here. Put a little color in. It's very little. Okay. Now the next one, we went into a little more of the a little more of the lavender hue. So I'll do the same thing with a fan brush. Get a basic idea of where this reflects. There, something about like so. And we'll just sort of lay in a little color right along like that. Okay, and then the last one was quite dark. So you just sort of, and these have to be bigger, just like the ones on top are. Look at there. And if worse comes to worse, you can always turn your painting upside down and do this. It might be a little easier, but we're not looking for an exact representation because I'm going to blend most of it out. I just want to reflect a little bit into the water here. Not much, just a little. But there's very little paint here. Very little paint here. Now then, let me see. We'll take this. I want to pull a little of that color down into the water too. For that, I'm just going to pull straight down. Straight down. Do, 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 do. Like that. Okay. Brush with a little bit of the green on it so it has a hint of color into the reflection also. Now, normally when we're doing reflections, we pull down. I'm going to take a clean, dry brush this time and pull upward because I don't want to pull all those lines down into the water. I want to keep these fairly pure on the edge. And beat your brush off occasionally just to get rid of any excess paint. And you can begin forming and shaping and it'll look like reflections. The whole range is reflected in there. And I'm using quite a bit of pressure and sort of experiment a little bit. Try a little pressure first. If I didn't work, try a little more. It's easy to add more. But if you start off real firm and that's too much, it's hard to go back and, and reverse that. So start with a little and build up. Now very lightly go across. Very lightly. Something about like that. Just enough to ripple it a little bit. Give it a, a watery feel. Okay. And that's one of the simplest, easiest ways of reflecting things into the water. Let's take a little white. I'm going to take a little dark sienna. Maybe a little Van Dyke brown into it. Oh, that's better. A little yellow ochre, too. I want to make a little land back here in the distance. So cut off our tiny little roll of paint. Very little. Come right along in here. And I'm just going to put a, a hint of this sand color back here. Soil color, whatever you want to call it. There. Just so it looks like there's a little bank way back in the distance there. There. And a little touch of the liquid white. I'll pull it out very flat, cut across. And here and there and there and here, we'll just put the indication of a little water line. And maybe even a few little things that are sort of floating across, right across the reflections. It helps look like there's something on top and the reflections are underneath. There we go. Keep these lines basically straight or it'll look like your water's going to run right out of the canvas. Now then, let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. we got to put something over here on this side. So let's take, let's take, clean off a spot to work. We're going to use some black, Prussian blue, Van Dyke. We'll even put some, we'll put some alizarin crimson in there and a little sap green. What the heck? Basically all your dark colors, just throw them in there, it doesn't matter. But might as well mix up a pretty good pile of paint. Now then, let's use the old fan brush. We'll go right into that and just load it full of color. We need a lot of color on the bristles. Let's come right up here in the right corner. Maybe in our world there lives two, 
Maybe there's some little distant trees way back in here. And all we're doing is tapping downward. I just want the indication of trees. I don't want a lot of detail. There. Just the indication of some nice trees back in here. If you get too much detail, it'll ruin that illusion of distance. So too much detail can also be disturbing to the eye. I don't want to kill all the reflections, so I'll just go about like that. And we'll fill all that up. There. And maybe it comes right on out here. Something about like that. And then take a two inch brush. I'm just going to lift upward a little bit. Just sort of blends all that together. And, and while we have that color going, Let's just pull straight down. Pull a little that color right into the water. It too will reflect. Straight down though, straight down. And then go across. And that easy. We have instant reflections. I'll tell you what, let's do. Shoot. Maybe here in the foreground, there's some nice evergreens we can see. We'll take the old fan brush, load a little little sap green, little yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Touch a bright red now and then. The bright red is a duller. It makes color duller. And let's just put the indication of some nice little evergreens that live right here in the foreground. And I'm making them a little lighter just so they'll stand out. Just so they'll stand out. And each one here I'll vary the, the tone of green a little so they separate. Here and there we'll add a little yellow ochre stronger. There. Something like so. Let's see? Maybe over in here. <laughs> Isn't that neat? You can just put as many as you want in here. Just to give that feeling. A little of it down in here. There. Maybe right there. Something about like yet. Reflect a little. And we'll just sort of pull those down a little. Go across. There. Take our knife and back to that color we used for the bank. And let's just gently, gently lay in the indication of a little, little bank here too. We want some for those little trees to set on back in there. They're too pretty not to have something back here to hold them all up. Little touch of the liquid white. Clean up the edges a little. And here and there and there and here you can scratch in the indication of some sticks and twigs and little things that live back in there. Like so. Now then I'm going to have some real fun. we got a minute or so left here. Take some Van Dyke Brown and paint thinner. We'll put the paint thinner in it to make it thin. Make it thin. Just Van Dyke Brown. Put some black in it too. I want it dark. But we're making this color quite thin. There we go. And then I'm going to take white and black to make a gray, sort of a light gray, and do the same thing. Put paint thinner in it to make it quite thin. Not real thin, but thinner than it normally is. There. Okay. Now then, I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a second. Maybe right out here, there's a little land area. Take that same brown color and just drop in a little bit of land here. Something like so. Zoom. There. Okay. Now then I'm going to take an oval brush, a little oval brush here, and I'm going to pull it through that dark color, both sides, and in one side I'm going to take right through that light color. And up in here, we're going to have maybe some great big stones that live here. Great big stones. And we just put several of them in here. But isn't that a fantastic way of making a lot of beautiful big rocks? This is so you have a place to stand and, and look at this gorgeous scene. There. But in one stroke, you can make all the little goodies there. And maybe there's a few little grassy things that have moved in out here, and they live right out here on the rocks. But isn't that a nice little painting? Shows you 
how you can do some super things. Hope you try this one. We're going to call that one finished. From all of us here, happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. And I, I thought today maybe we'd do something just a little different. I, I really believe you'll enjoy it. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And they'll come across right there. While they're doing that, let me show you what, I, what you caught me doing up here. I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched canvas. And I take a little black gesso and a paper towel and I just sort of daubed. I know I want a big tree here and here. And other than that, I really don't care. I've allowed the black gesso to dry completely. Now on top of that, I'm adding a, a mixture of liquid clear, midnight black, and a little bit of titanium white. In other words, I want a very thin gray color. And I'm going to cover most of this with just this very thin gray color. And I'll just finish doing that here real quick. And all we do is just sort of scrub it in like so. But this is an extremely thin paint. Liquid clear with gray just black and then a little bit of titanium white. About like that. That's really all I'm looking for. Okay. And the whole canvas has been covered with that mixture. So it just gives us a little background color to play with. Sometimes we, we use liquid clear by itself. Sometimes we mix color with it. And today that's what we're going to do. So let me wash the old brush. That's the fun part of this whole technique. We wash it with odorless thinner. Shake off the excess, <laughs> and then just beat the devil out of it. Now then, I want to add a few little hints of color here and there. But I'll tell you what, first I'm going to take the thin paint off my palette and lay it aside somewhere, because I don't want to thin any of my other paints out with it. We put that thin paint on there just so everything's nice and slick and, and color blends on the canvas. And the gray will help us mute or dull all the colors in this particular painting. Take a small, very small amount of alizarin crimson. Really be stingy with it here. I don't want but a tiny little bit. Here and there, and there and here, I just want to change the flavor of this gray a little bit, just to make the painting a little more interesting. A little crimson here and there, like so. Maybe like there's a little nice warm little spot shining through there. I don't know, whatever you want. And you can use any color that, that makes you feel good. There. Maybe, tell you what, even, maybe even the least little bit of the sap green. It really doesn't matter, but a very small amount. Just want some little splotches of color here and there. All right. Maybe something about like that. And I'm even going to touch the least, least little bit of the thalo blue once in a while. And we'll just sort of blend that. But once again, the gray color that we put on there first will tone all of that down. There. So we just have a lot of little colors happening in, in various parts of the painting. There we go. Maybe even a little crimson over in here. It's really up to you. You make the big decision what you want and where you want it. Now then, a little titanium white right on the same brush. And take the white and I'll put right in here. I want to create the illusion of soft, very soft misty area back behind these trees. So the white will mix with that gray and you can see what's happening already. It gives that illusion. And you could use the liquid black and do this. It would work probably just as well. I just happen to have this handy and that's what I'm using today. But the liquid black would work just as well. Might even be easier. Who knows? Try it and see. There we are. Something like that. Maybe a little bit over in here. I want that mist just to sort of float behind these trees. There. I like very soft little misty paintings. They, they just do nice things for you. Okay. I want to brighten that a little bit more right in there. Right in there. I want that to be the softest area here. And it'll also have a tendency to bring your eye right there when you look at the finished painting. And that's where we want you to look. So that's why we put that in there. Now see, some of these things with a black gesso, see the little spots and stuff? They will show right through that paint. It is transparent enough to allow it to show. 
When the painting's done, people will think you spent tremendous amounts of time painting each one of these little details in there. And you don't have to tell them you did it just with a, a paper towel, just gobbing it in like that. That's our secret. Okay. Enough of that. Now then, let me grab one of the, the little half-size round brushes. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some Prussian blue, very strong blue, don't take much. Some alizarin crimson, make sort of a lavender color. Much, much more crimson than blue, proportionately. Much, much more, like so. There, okay, let me wipe off the old knife here. And we just wipe the knife on a paper towel, just cleaned off or soft rag, whatever you happen to have. I'm going to load this little round brush by just tapping it right into the color. Just tap it. And let's go right back in here. Let's start, let's start with this tree. Okay, now I don't, want to, I don't want to kill all of these. I want some of those to remain in the painting. So they're very special. Take care of those. I want to save, save some of them, retain some of those. There we go. Now let's just tap in a very, very basic little tree shape. This is just sort of a lavender-like color, very dark. It could almost be black. You could do it in black if you wanted to. No problem. There. Something about like that. Okay. And all we're looking for here is just general shapes. Once again, don't, don't look for a lot of detail. We'll worry about detail in the foreground. Right here, we just want it to look like a big old tree that's hanging out and just having a good time here. It doesn't take a lot of color because you have the, the black gesso underneath. The black gesso may be one of the neatest things that we've ever came up with. And we originally were gonna develop all kinds of colored gessos, yellow and all that, but it's very easy to take a little acrylic paint and put with your white gesso and make any color gesso that you want. But it's difficult to take white gesso and try to make black. So that's the reason we've made black gesso. Anybody can make gesso in other colors. Once again, just a little acrylic paint and gesso, and you can make anything that you want. All right, now then, take the little liner brush, little paint thinner, and go right into that same color. And I want this to be thin, almost like ink. So you can see it's literally running on the palette. But it's the same identical color. Let's go up here. Here and there, and there and here. I just want to put a few, not many, few little indications of some little tree trunks, stems, stalks, whatever you want to call them. Some little things that live in the middle of the tree and, and they hold it up. Keep it from falling over. Don't want it to fall over. Make a big noise. There. And some back in here that you can't hardly see. These should be very quiet. They shouldn't stand out real strong. I want them to be very subdued. There we go. Just all kinds of little things that live back in there. And you decide how many there are and where they live and, and all of that. Okay. Shoot, maybe we'll just use that same old brush. I'll go right into a little, little caddy yellow. Be right back. I'm going to get a little of the midnight black. I want it darker. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Black and yellow make a beautiful green color. And once again, all you do is tap and pick up a little yellow ochre. And little Indian yellow. Just mix all the yellows and the black together. Makes a beautiful green, okay? Now then maybe in our world, maybe, yep, right in here, but not a great deal of color. It's too far away, too far away. Maybe there's just all kinds of little bushes that live way back in here. Maybe there's a bigger one, but I don't want these very distinct. Quiet, quiet little bushes, shh. There they come, maybe they just hang right out over here. That sort of looks like a natural place for there to be a... I know, I know, I know, I got it. You begin seeing things when you do this, watch. Let's, let's make some brown. Sap green, good old sap green. And alizarin crimson in about equal parts. Makes a gorgeous brown. There we go. Sap green, alizarin crimson. And you can take it to the red side or the green side. Depends on 
the mood you're in that day or, or what you're trying to achieve. There, today I'm going to have it a little touch to the red side. Cut off a tiny little roll of paint. And maybe I go right in here. And maybe there's, shoot, maybe there's a little bank right here. A little bank out here in the woods. A place for all the little creatures to put their money. There we go. And I'm just really taking a knife and using it flat and pushing that and rubbing it in so it goes right into the fabric. Really want to grind it in there. There. Now a little titanium white and some of that same color. And the least little touch of it. And I want to come right back in here and just touch. And then the more you rub it, the darker it'll become. I don't want this to be too bright, too distinct yet. It's too far in the background. So you can put it on this very bright and then you rub it a little with a knife. And you can just soften it right on down to whatever degree of harshness that you want. Put a little dark back in there and it'll look like there. Little indentations and rocks and stones and all kinds of happy little things that live in wee back in the background. Add the least little touch of bright red to that. Just to give it a little pinkish flavor here and there. Something about like so. Now, back to my little small round brush. A little more of the green on it. And let's have a few little bushes that live right up in here. Like so. See, just tap it. Like that. Let them just come right over here. They just they're just hanging all over this like that. There, some little doers growing right out in here, wherever you think they should be. There. So I want that to look very grassy. Like there's all kind of little ferns and stuff that live there. All right. Then a little more of the brown. And we'll put a, oop, there's another little stone. But just work in layers, doing one little stone at a time. See, let that just work and play. Come back with our little round brush. Bring another one. But work in layers, that's most important. And that way you can just push the little stones right back into the bushes. Okay, back to our little brown color. Tell you what. This would be a beautiful place to have a little path. We have to we have to have a way of getting back in there. So we'll just do something about like that. And I'm really, really pushing firmly. There. I don't know. So you can hear probably how firm I'm pushing there. Don't know exactly where this is going to go. I mean, we don't care at this point. Whatever. Whatever. Now then, we'll use a big round brush. What the heck? We got big ones and medium sizes and little ones here. All kinds. Actually, there's only two sizes. Okay, maybe in our world, we need to close that little path in. Maybe we'll have some happy little bushes that live right here. Now you can use this brush sideways or up and down. Depends on the effect that you want. If you want to make it look like there's some little things hanging over, use it sideways. If you want to make it upstanding, use it like that. Just up to you. And if you don't like either one, you can change and use a different brush. There. All we're doing is putting in a little dark so our light will show. Okay. Nice little dark area in there. Let's take a little of that color we had. I'm gonna add a little yellow ochre to it. So I got yellow ochre, brown, white, little touch of red, all those nice little colors. And very lightly, barely, barely touching. Just begin. Look at that. See that? Now we got a way to slip back in there. Little bunny rabbit can run right in there, go back in there and hide. Or maybe he wants to go back and See, his brother lives back around the corner. There. His brother's name's Jim. I met him one time. No, that's my brother's name. I'm sorry. All right, there we go. OK. 
Okay. Something about like it. It makes a nice little path. Then we can begin adding all kinds of little bushes and grassy things. Maybe I'll finish up this little side right here. Doop, doop, doop. See there? I want that little path just to sort of look like it's going way back in the distance. There. All kinds of little things. Work in layers, though. Work in layers. Now, a little bit more black into the yellows. Now then, let's take, ooh, it's a nice little green color there. There we go. I'll grab some sap green. I got sap green up here. That'll change the flavor again. Just want to change the flavor continually. They're all green, but each different green just is a little different. And in the woods, you have all different colors of green. So don't be afraid to have a lot of greens. Even though they're close together, they'll look different when you finish your painting. Okay, maybe right there. Tell you what, I'm intentionally going to leave that dark right there because that'll help. You'll see. You'll see. It'll help set everything off. There we go. Like this big tree up here. I'm going to leave it dark. There we go. Just layer after layer after layer, but darker and darker down here toward the base. Down toward the base gets darker and darker. There's a whole clump of bushes there now. We're not even sure anymore how many bushes live there. There we go. Put a few little things there. Good. Just decided I need a little doer right there. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the old liner brush, find a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, to make a light brown, light brown color, very thin, very thin. Let's go up in here, here and there. I want to put the indication of a little stick and a little twig. There, there'd be some sticks showing through all this, all this many little bushes and things in here. There would be a few little sticks, and we need those. And it also helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. There. Okay. Now, where is our little path going here? I'll take some more of that brownish color. Let's keep it going on over here. Maybe I'll add even a little of that lavender that we had left over. We'll have it go somewhere like that. Then back to our little highlight color. Rub a little of that here and there. There we go. We don't know where this path goes. It just goes on around the corner, maybe. On around the corner. Tell you what. Now there's one that's a little dirty, but we'll use it anyway. Grab an old two-inch brush. It doesn't matter if it has a little color on it. Be right back. Get a little bit black so I can make some green. Now then, maybe let's have some fun. Maybe, maybe there's a little bush lives right here. See the difference now in the, in the way these little bushes look between the the big brush and the, and the little round brushes, and it makes it look like there's all kinds of different things in your in your world. Shoot, maybe. Tell you what, maybe there's a little grassy bank that comes right down. Like that. Right on down. And maybe it goes right on up in here somewhere. I don't know. Very soft. But we need nothing underneath. We have the color that was on the canvas, that grayish color. And it's just mixing with all kinds of... I'm going to put a whole bunch of this in here. You know, while I'm doing this, I just sort of put together a couple little segments of film with some of my little creatures on it. I want to sort of share them with you. This was my little squirrel when he was just a baby. Annette's holding him there. Isn't he just the cutest little thing? And then he gets a little older pretty soon and this is what they look like. There. Aren't they cute? This is Peapod. Do you remember Peapod the pocket squirrel? Now you know why we call him a pocket squirrel. He's just the cutest little thing. And by the time you get to see this, he'll be free. He'll be long gone. Look at that. 
That's one of them that I've raised and released. And you see how far he went, right out in my backyard. And he, he thinks foraging for food is running up the old man's leg. And that's, this is what it looks like to him when he runs up and finds a peanut. But he's so cute. That's what it looks like. But aren't they the most precious little things? But as I say, I've raised them since they were just tiny little babies. But I got a letter a few days ago from someone who thought we were condoning making pets out of these creatures, and I really don't. All of these creatures we turn loose back to the wild. I work with several of the rehab ladies around the country. Here in Muncie, I work with Diana Schaefer, the bird lady. And in Orlando, I work with several fantastic people like Carmen Shaw and, and Ann Young. She's the bird lady in Orlando. And I just think these are super people that are doing a job that needs to be done. And there's somebody in your area that does this too, but chances are, and they need your help. If you have time, stop by and give them a hand, and you'll find it so rewarding. Shoot, I, I go over to Ann Young's house whenever I have a few minutes. She just lives a little ways from me. And I sit around and feed the birds, and because she raises thousands of birds every year and releases them. I just put a little brown here. I get talking. Now I'm making a little brown and white. Make a little bank here. But I like to go over and sit with her and she teaches me about the birds and, and we feed them and, and you love them and they're just, you, you really will. I'll pre-warn you though, it's addictive and you will fall in love with them. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm gonna just lay a little grassy area right along here. I talk too much sometimes. I get on my, my little kicks with the animals and off I go. There we are. Okay. See, I just want to make a little bank here and there. Tell you what, we can take a little of that dark color and maybe there's just a big hole right there. This is just that dark purplish color. I want to make like a big recessed area. Place where some of my little creatures can go and hide at night. And I'll pull a little grass right over the top of it. See, now they have a little place they can sneak back in there and hide. There. Something like so. Now then, up here. Let's take the big round brush. And we'll just tap in a few basic shapes. Most of it's done in the black and and we don't need much up here, but just a few basic shapes. There we go. Once again, see areas like this, I want to leave in there. I want to leave in there. Just let the black gesso show through. There's our big old tree. Take a liner brush. Oh, we'll use a little brown and a little white. Whatever, doesn't much matter. Gonna cover most of it up. And this is where if you got an old wiggly hand, it really, really pays off. I want an old tree trunk. It looks like it's got some character to it. There. A few little things here and there. And we'll use our, we'll use a little half size round brush. It's already got that color on it. A little bit of black, yellow, a little sap green. Mix them together. And let's just come right up in here. We put the indication of all kinds of little leaves on here. There we go. There, brighten it up a little so you can see it a little better. There. I have a tendency to paint paintings that are quite subdued and quiet, so sometimes I have to brighten them up so they show up a little better on television. But when you're doing yours at home, you decide what color you want, how bright or how subdued that you want it. It's up to you up to you. There we go. As we're traveling around, or used to travel around and teach, and that and I did for years, you learn that everybody has their own idea of what nature looks like and, and the way they want to paint it. I don't do a great deal of teaching anymore. We have a lot of fantastic teachers now that, that travel around. And I'm getting too old. and <laughs> We got some nice young fellows like Dana. Steve, they, were, they go around and teach, and I take life easier. When you get old, you have to. There we go. 
get little bushes and stuff right along in here. There. Just drop them in. Wherever. Now let me take. Let me take. Take a little light color. And I'll put a little, little touch of paint thinner with it. And a little bit of dark color and put some paint thinner with it. So it's quite thin. They're both quite thin. Then take my liner brush, go through the dark color first, then just pull one side of it through the light color. I'm sorry. Slipped away on you. And I just want to make the indication maybe a, of a tree that lives right there. There he is. There he goes. Something about like that. And we'll put a few little limbs on him. This is maybe an old dead tree that lives out here. There we go. Maybe we'll even give him a friend right there. There. Okay, something like that. That gives you an idea. This is a fantastic little painting. I hope you'll try it because it'll it'll really pay you great dividends and you'll enjoy it. Put a little something around his foot. Shoot, I think this one's about ready for a signature. Let's take a little paint thinner, a little bit of red. Let's just sign this one. Call him finished. As I say, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Give it a try. Maybe, maybe you'll send me a photograph of, of your painting. I'd love to see it from all of us here. Let me wish you a happy painting, and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Thought today we'd just do a, a painting that's a lot of fun. So let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. Today I have my standard old canvas, and I've taken a little black gesso on a paper towel, and I've just sort of gobbed it all over, except right in here and there, I just sort of pulled it. I want to have a big waterfall today. So just a basic idea. We let the black gesso dry completely. Then we go back and I've covered the entire canvas with a very, very thin coat of liquid clear. Then over the clear, I've taken a little phthalo blue and phthalo green mixed together and painted up to here. And then here I just use a little phthalo blue and, and black and very little paint on top of the liquid clear. I just want enough so it sort of stains the canvas a little. And that's really all we're looking for. So we have the black gesso, the clear, and then a little bit of color on top. So let's go and just have some fun. Show you how fantastic this can be. Let's start with our old two inch brush today and a small amount of the titanium white. Now right up here above the waterfall, I wanna have a nice little soft light area coming out. So we take the white and we go right up in here and we just begin making little X's little crisscross strokes right above the waterfall. Something about like so. And just let it blend back into the what's going to end up being big trees and stuff back in here. I can't. See all the little black gesso things still show through and it looks like you've worked yourself to death and you've done very, very little. That's the beauty of this black gesso. It may be one of the neatest things that we've ever come up with. There. And you can make that as bright as you want it. Maybe you want it a little brighter right in there. You can take it several times. It's up to you. You can add just a little more of the titanium white and work it out. Something like so. To whatever degree that you want. There. Now then. Tell you what. The fun part of this painting is the old waterfall. So why don't we, why don't we jump right in and do that one. Let's do that right off. Okay, let me wash the old brush. That's the fun part of this. Also keeps our crew on his toes. There. Shake it on. And <laughs> In one of the earlier shows, I, I showed you the cameraman over here that he wears a raincoat behind the camera. But that way we, we're sure not to get him too wet. Okay, now let's do the waterfall. And for that today, I'm going to just use the old fan brush and I'm gonna dip the fan brush into a little bit of the liquid clear, you don't need a great deal. And then with the clear on the brush, go right into a little titanium white. Don't go away, be right back. I'm gonna get the least little touch of phthalo blue and put in there, just to flavor it a little. So we have a little liquid clear, white, and the least little touch of phthalo blue. Let's go up here. Now, 
I want to make a, a stroke comes across and then down. It'll give the impression that the water is sort of flowing and then somebody pulled the stopper out and down it went. So we go over and we go boom. Try to do it fast. If you do it slow, your hand's going to wiggle and you get a waterfall that will do it fast. It really works better if you do it fast. And you decide how big you want that waterfall to be. Maybe like that. Now we have a nice waterfall. Now we're going to push it wee back into the background. You can also, let's do it with a two inch brush, take the two inch brush and pull upward and blend it in. And it'll soften and bring all that together. Now see, you can look right through that waterfall and see stones and rocks that are behind it. There. That's sort of sneaky, isn't it? All right. Let's mix up. Let's mix up some black. A little bit of the Prussian blue, a little Van Dyke brown, a lizard crimson, maybe a little sap green too. What the heck? Whatever good dark color you can come up with. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. Now, we'll just continue to use the old two inch brush. I'm going to load a little bit of this color into the two inch brush by just pushing. So you can see how the brush is sort of sliding. See, there's a little ridge of paint. There's one just like it on the brush, and that's what we paint with. Okay, now then maybe in our world there's some big trees. Here they come. There they come. Just use the corner of the brush and begin forming some basic shapes for some nice big trees that are just, they just sort of hang out here. Just sort of hang out here. Like that. There. All right. And right along in here. I don't know. Maybe on this side over here, here comes some big old doers hanging out. And all I'm looking for right now is some basic shapes to give me some ideas of where all these trees will end up being. We're not committed yet. All we're looking for are just basic shapes. Just little basic shapes. So don't be too concerned. There. You can even take the black gesso and, and mix it with white gesso and make all kinds of gorgeous effects before you ever paint the first stroke. There. And people, they'll go crazy trying to figure out how you made some of these effects. Shh, that's our secret. Now then, we need something to contain our waterfall. We got an idea where the trees are gonna be, so let's take, we use old Van Dyke brown little dark sienna mixed together. Pull it out flat, cut across, and we get our little roll of paint. It lives right on the edge of the knife. Now, I'm gonna put a, a big, Big old rock that lives right there. See, that gives gives us some boundaries on that waterfall so it doesn't just hang there. There we go. And this rock is in front of that rock because I want that rock here to be behind, back behind the waterfall. There, something about like that. <laughs> there we are. All right. All right. Now we'll take a little touch of white, a little bit of dark sienna, Van Dyke brown into it. Maybe even a least little touch of yellow ochre. Ooh, that's maybe a little more. I like that. Just enough to flavor it a little. Cut across our little roll of paint. Then we'll come right up here on the top of this big stone, rock, cliff, whatever you want to call it, and just barely touching. We want to make this look flat on top because this is where maybe there's a little fox that lives out here in these woods, and he sits right here and he watches everything. So he needs a little flat spot. And it doesn't hurt to make up little stories like it, to give reason for things being the way they are. There, now, no paint. Just grab the edges and pull down. I want this to remain quite dark. Maybe the least little, there we go, least little touch of paint. Almost no paint. I'm going to put a lot of grassy things in here that's going to cover that and push it back. So don't worry about it at this point. Don't even worry about it. Maybe a little show through here and there. So we'll just put some spots here and there that maybe, maybe some of the little grassy areas will show through. All right. See there. Looks like little stone showing through already. As I say, this black gesso is so neat and it makes your painting life so much easier. 
Now to let's go back to our old two inch brush. Maybe over here. Let's decide where these big branches hang. Maybe they hang right over in front of the waterfall. That's scary, isn't it? After you do such a waterfall, it's it's so nice. Then you start dragging all these big tree limbs right over the front of it. But that's all right. You know it's back here. And if you learn, your time is not wasted. There. And it also helps create that illusion of distance because it looks like the waterfall is way back behind these trees. And that's what we want to do. There. But it takes very little paint. Once again, the black gesso has done most of the work for you. Let it work for you. Shoot, be lazy. Maybe there's something that comes out over here even. Wherever you think it should be. Okay. Now, I don't want to cover up all these little areas here. I want, to, I want to leave some of them showing through. So when it's done, it'll look like you can look through there and once again see some of the little stones. Of course, if you cover them up, we can always go back and add them right back in. Very easy. I'm going to grab another clean two-inch brush. I have several of them going. I'm going to take the least, least little bit of titanium white tapped right on the, right on the corner. Just a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit right there. Now down here at the base of the waterfall, if water fell this far, it would, it would churn and create a tremendous amount of mist. So let's just do the same thing. We'll take to the top corner of that brush and begin tapping. Just tap. It's just basically titanium white. And you start tapping here. I want to create that nice misty effect right down here. There. Something about like so. All right. Just by tapping. And you can fluff it a little bit. Very gently. Now the water hits and you have that nice area down in there. All right, back to my brush with the old tree color of it, tree limb color. Because I want some of these limbs to be in front of the mist. And think about what's in the foreground and what's behind. Try to paint the thing that's the farthest away first and work forward. And I know you say it sounds logical, and it is. Really just common sense painting. Paint the thing that's farthest away first and work forward. There. Wherever. Now, let's take our little liner brush. Little liner brush, little liner brush, little liner brush. We'll use that same color. And I want to make this paint thin, like ink. Very thin. Turn the bristles in the paint. That brings it to a nice sharp point. And we'll go up in here. And here and there and there and here, we'll just put the indication of a few little sticks and twigs and all kinds of little things that we can see sticking out through there. There. See there? Already it gives the impression that there's all kinds of little limbs and things happening. And, and you've done very, very little. Very little. There. Wherever. 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 Maybe on the other side we'll put a couple also. We don't want him left out. Shoot, he'll get mad at you. There. Maybe there's even some old wiggledy ones that hang right over here. There they are. If you have trouble making the paint flow, just add a little more paint thinner to it. Just means that it's not quite thin enough. Sometimes there's some, there he is, right out over the waterfall. There. But all these little things that are in front of the waterfall help give that illusion that it's behind. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to make it wee back in there today. I'll just use that same old brush. Go right into a little cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre. Once in a while I'm going to bump a little of that bright red. Let me grab a little black on the brush. There. Okay, just tap, push. 
See how that brush pushes that little ridge of paint up? That's what we're looking for. Let's go up in here. Now, let's begin putting in the sparkles, the icing on the cake right here. This is it. All the little highlights. Think about shape and form and how all these little limbs grow in clumps, little branches and trees. It's just, these are just a collection of bushes that got together and grew big to make a big tree. Think about little individual bushes that live in here. There we go. There, a little more color. There they come. So you can do fantastic things with a great big old two inch brush. If you just give it a little chance, that's all it needs. A little chance. over a waterfall. Mm. All right. There. Maybe here's another happy little tree. He lives right there. Boy, he has some view, doesn't he? Wouldn't it be a nice place if you were a tree to live? It'd always be nice and damp. You'd have plenty of water. Mm. I'd like to have a little house here. I think a waterfall is one of the most beautiful sounds. Mother used to love to listen to the waterfalls. That was one of her favorite things. As you might have noticed on the shows, I've dedicated this series to her since the last show. I, I lost my mother, and my brother Jim and I miss her very much. But this is the kind of scenes that she liked. There. All right. Mm. All kinds of gooders. We have to decide what's going to be down here at the bottom. We can get crazy and just keep going. Let's put a little bit on the, just a few little things on the other side over here, too. There we go. Mm -hmm. I really like these kind of paintings. Really like them. And they're so easy to do with the black gesso. Before we had the black gesso, this was, this was something that I wanted to paint, but I couldn't figure out how to do it in the time frame that they give us for television. Because the actual painting time is only uh, 26 and a half minutes or something like that. And I have a mean old director. Boy, if I don't, if I don't stop right on the money, she gets mad and comes out here and yells and screams. Treats me rough. Not really, not really. I made that up. There we go. See all those little things? You can just make layer after layer after layer. And each one of these will help push that waterfall further and further back into the background. There we are. Okay. There. Okay, a little bit right in there. We better make some decisions what's down at the bottom of this waterfall pretty soon. I'm going to fiddle a whole canvas up full of beautiful little trees because I like to do these little trees like this. But make them darker and darker down in here. It's a nice shadow area down here. You don't want a lot of light down in there. Okay, let's make some decisions. Let's go with Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna mixed together. Maybe in our world there lives. There lives. Maybe there's a stone right there. I don't know. So you just sort of look. And everybody's painting will be different. Don't just try to copy what we've done here. Look at your painting. Painting should not just be copying. It should be doing your own thing. That's really what makes it fun. And that's the person you need to please, is yourself. If you're happy with what you've done, that's what's important. That's really what's important. It's not what somebody else tells you should be done. Not in painting, anyway. Maybe there's a big cliff over here. Okay. There, just fill all of that. Because it's dark here, we don't have to put much color. Now, we'll take some of our brown and white, little tiny roll of paint on the knife. I just sort of let it bounce along here and play. There, wherever we want it. And then 
clean your knife off and you can come back and just sort of bring all that together. a big old mean stone right there. All kinds of little things that live back in here. Okay, mix up a little touch of color. I almost ran out of color. There we go. So then we just take our other colors and bounce them around. Let the knife just touch, bounce, jump, move, carry on like that. And that's, it'll make all these beautiful, rough, rough places. That's what my doggie says is rough. There. Bounce it across there. Just bounce it. Put a spring on the Indian knife. Just let it play. Zing. Over here. There, same, same old. See, maybe there's a big cliff that comes right out through here. We don't know where it goes. And it comes down. Maybe this is sort of washed out underneath. There we go. See how you can see things, though? Maybe it's sort of washed out. Light's just singing through there. I'm going to take my fan brush, I'll take my fan brush, a little bit of the liquid clear, go back into the titanium white, get a little phthalo blue and phthalo green on there, get them both. Not much, it's very strong, a little tiny bit of liquid clear, just to soften it up and make it slide across here a little easier. Now back in here, maybe the water's coming along here and goes, Ping. see there, fell over. Look at there. Maybe there's a little stone back in there and a little splash. You don't have to make those noises, but it helps. <laughs> it does help. Maybe, maybe there's another little thing. Maybe, maybe stones all over the place here. See there? We don't know. But the color underneath is con constantly coming through also. We've had Thalo green, thalo blue underneath. And all that comes through. Maybe, choo, I like all these little watery falls. There. Isn't that fantastic that you can make water just move like that any way that you want it to? It just pours right out of there and off it goes on a long journey. We don't know where it's going to go. Well, we do know where it's going to go. It's going to end up in the ocean. We just don't know which one. There we go. Now, tell you what. This would be a super, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think maybe, I don't do this very often, but in nature, you always have old trees that have fell off into the water. And sometimes we avoid putting them in here, but why not have one? Here's an old tree. I'm just using Van Dyke Brown right now. Take a little brown and a little white here, mix together. Come right back in here and just touch. Just touch, put a little highlight on that rascal. This old tree just fell off into the water and it's laying here. Some of the bark still left on it. Let me take our little script liner brush, go right into our Van Dyke Brown. Maybe there's a big old limb here. Put it on with brown. Maybe there's some little ones out in here. My cat. Wherever. A little brown and white. So we have a little highlight. I want that old limb to show up. Never even know, maybe. Maybe maybe this is real low right here and the water is literally coming over that. But this paint, I thinned it with a little bit of liquid white. So it's very thin, almost the consistency of liquid white. And that way you can go right over the top of that thick brown 
without it all mixing together. So now we have a little place where the water just comes right over the old tree that's laying out there. There. Maybe. Shoot, we're having so much fun. Let's just, let's get a little crazier here. Maybe. Yep, maybe there's a big old tree here. <laughs> Once again, got to make those little noises. I'm just using a liner brush, but you could do this with a fan brush or whatever. It doesn't much matter. Doesn't much matter. Whatever. Whatever you're comfortable with. Put a few little arms on him. Just a few little arms. Somebody wrote a while back and said, you've really, you've really lost it now, Bob. You've given the trees arms. In the next series, we're going to give them legs. What the heck? I think... In your world, you can do anything. If you want your trees to have arms or toes, it doesn't matter. There. Now, right out here, maybe there's just a little, little grass that grows right around his little foot. So use there. See, grass right out, coming on there like that. Maybe there's a few leaves on that little tree still. Use a little yellow ochre and just put the indication here and there, just a couple little highlights. I don't want a whole bunch on that tree. Don't want it to cover up all the fantastic things that are behind it, but just a few little things. There we go. See there? Now, I'll dip the brush into the least little amount of the paint thinner. I just want to thin this. We're getting quite a few layers of paint now. So we need to keep the last layer the thinnest. A little green made by sap green, a little, little yellow. And down in here, we can put the indication of a few little bushes and stuff that live right along here at the water's edge. They set up here on these big rocks. There. Just like that. See there? You can sort of have them hang over. We can take a little brown and white. And here and there, you know, if you have a something that hangs over like this, there's always little roots and stuff that hang over the edge. And you can make all kinds of little doors that hang off like that. And it helps give a little realism to your painting. There we are. All kinds of little things. All right, I think we're about to the point we have a painting that's about finished. I'm going to take a little paint thinner, a little bright red, and I think we'll sign this one. Once again, when you're signing your painting, make this paint, look at there, it's literally running, so you can see it dripping. It's that thin. Over and over I have letters from people that say it's hard to sign. Keep it thin. Let's sign that rascal. Luckily I have a very small name. I can do it very quickly. Hope you've enjoyed this one. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting that, that I believe you'll really enjoy. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. And while they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here. I have my standard old double prime pre-stretched canvas. And today I've, I've taken a little piece of contact paper and just cut an oval out of it and then we've covered the whole inside of the oval with a thin even coat of liquid white. So the canvas is all wet and it's ready to go so tell you what let's, let's just have some fun today. Today I think I'll start oh let's use a little one inch brush. I'm going to take just the smallest amount of cad yellow. Very very small amount of cadmium yellow. We don't need much today. I think today we'll do the little seascape that you see at the beginning of the show and I'll show you how that was made. And this will not be an, an exact duplicate of that, but it'll, it'll be very close. Okay, and we'll just take a little one inch brush and just make sort of a little yellow circle right there, right there. Without cleaning the brush, I'll pick up a least little touch of the yellow ochre. And we're, we're really applying very little color here. There, there's not a great deal of color on the canvas. Something, oh, about like that, that's fine. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter. There we go. Now then, let me wash the old brush. Okay, and we just wash our brush with odorless paint thinner. 
since these are oil paints, it, that's what we use. There we go. Now then, let's take, mix up a little color here. I'm going to take some white and a little thalo green mixed together. Now, thalo green is sort of a, well, it's sort of an emerald green. It's a gorgeous color. Very strong, though. Okay, I'm going to wipe off the old knife. Be very careful with it. You need that much. And we'll put a little of that right on the old one-inch brush. And I'm going to go right out here, right around that, and just drop in a little bit of that, like so. I've got a lot of letters when people are asking for just a very simple little seascape that's quite effective. And this is the one that I've designed. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it. Now then, same color, except I'm going to add a little bit of the midnight black. So I have phthalo green, a little white, and midnight black. Just want to dull it down a little bit. Okay. And we'll go right around here with that. What we're trying to achieve here is the illusion that it gets progressively darker as it goes out away from the sun. There. Now then, same color. Same color. So we have phthalo green, white, black. And now I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue. Just to change the flavor and make it a little darker. A little darker. Okay. And we'll just fill up the rest of the sky with that. That easy. And we have a basic idea. Maybe our water line will be right along in here somewhere. At this point, we're not really concerned. We'll worry about that later. Right now, we're just applying some color to the canvas. There. See, we already have a, a masterpiece for the Museum of Modern Art right there. We could stop. <laughs> All right, I just like to wash the brush. Okay. Now then, <clears throat> let's, let's begin blending. But today I'm going to blend a little bit different. Normally I just do a little crisscross. Today I'm going to touch and push. Just touch it and push. I want to make this look like there's little rays of light coming out from here without actually having rays of light. I just want to give that impression. So just by doing this, this is the way that we'll blend it. There. And I'm going to turn the brush over occasionally so that I get a little bit of that color in here. All right. And the least little bit of titanium white right on that same brush. And begin tapping. There. Just like so. That's all there is to it. And you can do this over and over and over. And you will not believe the effect that you can create. There we go. But all we're doing here is just tapping, pushing. And I'm doing it quite firmly, as you probably can hear. But you begin seeing that illusion that it's coming out from here. Always start in the light area and work outward. We don't want to take that dark, dirty color back into the center. We don't want to lose that nice, bright area. There. Okay. You're beginning to see that? It just it looks like there's a glow going all the way around. And as I say, I have some time restrictions here that you don't have at home. And you can do this for a long time. And you get it to, get it to any degree of softness that you want it. but it's, it will make just one of the most gorgeous skies you've ever seen. And you don't have to limit it to seascapes. It's also very, very effective and very pretty for landscapes. You just beat the old brush. That just takes off the excess paint. There we go. Something about like that. We just keep it going. There. wash the brush and we'll start all over again with a little bit of white and do it just one more time real quickly so you can see the effect that happens here. <laughs> That's the brush it's really fun to do. Go back into a little more of the titanium white and I'll wash the brush because I'm going to start right back here in the lightest area and work outward. There. Still doing that tapping and pushing at the same time. Outward, 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 outward. Always blending outward. But isn't that fantastic? And you can do this. It's very, very simple. Very simple. All right. 
And right on up here a little bit. And this particular painting, I know basically what's going to happen since we did it for the opening of the show. So I know there's going to be some clouds and stuff in there. We don't have to worry so much about it up in there. There we go. All right, one more time we'll wash the old brush. Actually, I just like to keep the camera crew on their toes. There. Now then, very lightly, very lightly, just blend the entire sky. And that effect will still remain in there. You can still see that. It looks like it's just, light's just exploding. There. Something about like that. And you can blend it to any degree of softness that you want. It's up to you. Little hair right there. Just take the corner of the brush, lift it off. That's all there is to it. If you get a hair, because these are natural bristle brushes, they do have a tendency to shed a little bit, especially during mating season. But if you happen to get a little hair, just take the corner of your brush and pop it off. All right. Now, we'll use the same old brush. I'm gonna go right back into the color that we had there. It's phthalo green, a little black, a little blue, white. Tap a little color right onto the bristles like that. Something like so. And we'll go right up in here and maybe, maybe there's a happy little cloud lives right there. And all you do is just tap. Just sort of tapping and giving it a little pushy push. There. Something about like that. I had a little cloud. There we go. Maybe, I think there was one about here too. So I say, this won't be an exact duplicate of the one you see at the opening, but it'll give you an idea of how it was made. And then you, you make your own masterpiece. About like so. A little darker color. And maybe up here at the top you can make out the indication of a few little clouds that live way up here. There. Wherever. Now we can wash your brush. One more time. If nothing else, this is a good exercise in keeping your brush clean. There. Now very lightly. One hair and some air. You just blend this. Just blend it. And go right across the entire sky, very gently. And blend it all together. There. I beat the brush once again, only to remove excess paint. It's just, it's much faster and easier than going through the whole cleaning procedure. And it'll clean it pretty well. Now, maybe in our world we'll put a little sun up here. We'll take a little white paint, a little titanium white, and I don't want this to be real bright, just enough so that you can see it. And then very gently, you can blend right over the top of that. And see, now we have a sun, the indication of some rays coming out, and some happy little clouds. That easy. That easy. Now, major decision. Where's our water line? Let's take, we'll use black, phthalo green, little phthalo blue, little white. I don't want this water too dark today. Something about like that. Not too dark. And big decision time. Maybe our water line is right along here. Right along here. And if you have trouble making a water line that's halfway straight, which I do frequently, mine have a tendency to sort of run to one side or the other, you could put a piece of masking tape across there before you start painting. And it'll assure that your water line then is exactly where you want it. You just pull the masking tape off once you have the sky finished. There. You know, it's fantastic. We get hundreds and hundreds of letters from people all over the country that are painting and and people send me photographs. But recently, right here at the station where this filmed, they had a little contest. I want to show you, I want to show you a picture that a young man did, a couple of them in fact, named Chris, that lives right here in Muncie, Indiana. Can you believe this? He brought these in and let me look at them, because he won the contest, and you can certainly see why. Chris, you're doing fantastic. But these are the kind of things that I love to see because they make it all worthwhile. This young man's probably Oh, I don't know, 15 years old or so, and I'm guessing. But he has one heck of a painting future ahead of him. So congratulations, Chris. There, all I did is just fill that up with a little color. Not like that. And we can wash the old brush again. There. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. 
All right, let me find a little fan brush. There were some little headlands back in the background. So I use a little black, a little black, a little, little bit of the blue, a little thalo green, same exact colors. We just change the proportions a little bit, so it has a little different flavor. Maybe in our world there lives, maybe there's a little, yep, a little headland lives right there, barely touching the canvas. The more color that you want, the harder you push. It'll get darker and darker that way. Maybe, yeah, oh, little bump right there. It's your world. So you really decide how you want these to look. It's up to you. It's really and truly up to you. Painting is such an individual thing. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Everybody sees nature th through different eyes. And the way you see it is the way it should be painted. Now, just take the big brush and sort of pull that out a little bit. Like so. And I have several little fan brushes going. I'll get another one here. I'm going to take a little white. A little touch maybe of the thalo green, but mostly white. Here's our light source. All you have to do is just sort of tap. Just tap. This is a very simple way of putting some little highlights back here on these little headlands. There. Like that. There we go. You know, I get a lot of, a lot of letters also. People asking if there's any possibility of seeing these paintings that are done on television. And recently, the Minatrista Cultural Center here in Muncie has started a tour that's going to go all over the country, and they have. Well, in fact, they'll, they'll, have the, they'll have the entire television set. They're going to have my easel, everything. It'll travel all over the country. And I think there's about 30 paintings there that come out of the hardcover book, the original painting. So if you've ever wanted to see any of these actual paintings, uh, sort of check around and see if it's going to be in your town. Because I think you'll enjoy it. They've put a tremendous amount of work into this exhibit. And, and it's for good cause. I think you'll really love it there. But you can actually see the easel that we use here, and, and I'm even going to donate my dirty old shoes that over the years I've, I've beaten the brush above them. The, the paint sort of falls on them and the tops are green. You don't ever get to see that. So if it comes to your town, come out and see us. We'll have people there that are talking and showing you how to do it. and It's just going to be a good time. All right. Let's start putting in some little waves and stuff in, back in here. And today I'm just going to do a, waves in a, an extremely simple way. I'm going to use a small knife, pull the paint out flat, got a little thalo green and white here, very little thalo green, a little roll of paint. And now very firmly, and we want to literally bend the blade. Decide in here where all the little things live. And you can just begin very firmly pushing in the indication of little waves that are far, far away. Real far away. See there? But it's that easy. There. And this is probably the simplest type of seascape to make. Even if you've never painted a seascape before, this one you can do. This one you can do. Because sometimes seascapes give people a little, little difficulty. This one's easy. This one is easy. There we go. A few little things here and there. But see, you just allow the paint to work and, and create the illusions. Maybe, maybe there's another one. I remember right in here somewhere. There. But firm, really. This is where you take out all your frustrations with the canvas. You get in there and really, as Steve, my son, says, he says, mush it in there. I don't know if that's really a word or not, but you certainly understand what he's saying. Just moosh it in there. And I think there was one more maybe right in here. We had a little boat in there. I'm going to try to put a little boat in here too. I like those little devils. Something about like so. There. And you can go back and add a little ripple here and there. Whatever you want. Whatever. And wherever. Now then, I want to create the illusion up here of maybe the sand's a little wet. So we can take a little white paint and just pull it downward like that. Just pull it downward. 
grab it then with a large brush, pull it, and go across. That easy, it'll make it look like that's wet. Now then, to do our little boat. The easiest way that I've found, take the knife and begin scraping out just a little basic idea. That'll sort of help you lay out your perspective and everything. Just lay it out, Shoom. here it comes right up in here. We have a front, we have the other side, down, we have a back, and then it'll come back in here. Something about like that. Then you can scrape out all this excess. There we go. Tell you what, let's use, let's use a little filbert brush. I'm, I'm gonna make a little brown out of some sap green, some sap green, alizarin crimson, and about equal parts. We'll make us a little brown here. There, maybe a little more green. You can take this to the green hue, green side, or the or the reddish side. It's up to you. I usually like it a little to the reddish side, but it's it's an individual thing. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. Now then, take our little filbert brush, and we can just begin filling this in. Just begin filling it in, something like so. There. And here it comes this way. And this is just a very simple little boat. Maybe, maybe the guy parked it here while he ran up on the beach somewhere. Who knows? There, and I'm gonna take a little black and begin filling in some of the darker areas. There, back in there. I can. Okay, maybe a little black and white, make a little grayish color. Bring it right along here, it's just so that stands out a little. Maybe even a little more. Oh, that's even better. There we go. And then underneath here, a little dark color. Could there be a little shadow under there? See there? Something like so. Oh, and over here on the other side, we need some nice little dark colors too. There, now let me get the little liner brush. Dip it in a little of the paint thinner. Make me a thin brown color and a little front on the boat right here. Like that. Wash the little brush. And I'm gonna highlight that with a little bit of titanium white thin, or you could just use liquid white. Something like so. And back here on the back of the boat. Maybe there's some See? There we go. Something like so. And you can put in a few little details here and there. There, it's parked up there on the beach and just, as I say, maybe he was out paddling around and decided to take a little break and maybe he caught a little fish out there he brought up here to cook. Who knows? Just make up little stories. It really helps bring everything together. A little liquid white. I'm gonna add some titanium white to it. I just wanna thin the titanium a little bit, or a little roll of paint still. Now we'll put the indication here that maybe there's a little water sort of settled around it. Just a little, like so. Shoot, sometimes it's even nice. Maybe, maybe a little brown down here in the sand so you can even see the indication that there's a touch of reflection of the color into the damp sand underneath. Just a little touch, little touch. There we go. Push very firmly though. And that'll help give the impression that there's water all around this bottom. All right. There. Sometimes back here, I'm gonna play a little bit back in some of these ways. If you take just a little dark color and put it right underneath, it'll make it look like they're upstanding or standing up. Least little bit of dark color right underneath and it gives depth underneath. As I say, I'm gonna keep this one simple, I promised. But without getting too crazy, it's little things like that. We'll just sort of help give the impression that there's depth under your water. In some of the other series, we've done some seascapes that are if you if you want some of the big crashing waves, we really we've really done some that have some nice waves in them. There. Now maybe, maybe, maybe there's some little sea oats that live right up in here. So for that, 
I'm going to take a little sap green, a little bit of that brownish color that we made, like so. And I'm just going to take a one-inch brush and just sort of pop in a little indication here and there, some little weed, maybe some over here if I remember to, something like that. Doesn't much matter, however you want them. Yeah, we'll push that up like that. Okay. Then underneath there, we'll take a little brown, a little white, mix it together. Need some soil for all this to set on. Just like so. A little bit of, little bit of dirt under there. There. Something like that. I say, if you get a chance to, to watch this little exhibit when it comes to your town, I really think you'll enjoy it. I really think you'll I'm so proud of it. So many fantastic people have put so much work into it. It's, it's really beautiful. I'm just taking a little paint thinner, a little bit of the brown, and begin lifting up a little of this so it will make some little sea oak things out there. Go into a little bit of the greenish color here and there. There. And the wind's blowing up here on the beach. There, maybe there's some ooh, right over our boat. That's okay, because that's the way it would be. There. Okay. Maybe. A little yellow ochre, a little white, and paint thinner. And we'll put in a few right in here. And some of them have little doers hanging on the end. You can just take the little liner brush and just put them hanging on there. It's real easy. No problem at all. All right. Now then, let's take a little white, a little white, some of that brown color we made, a little yellow ochre. I want to make a nice little color like it. Don't over mix it. See how marbly that is? That's what we're looking for. Because when you cut off that little roll of paint, It'll be right there in the same way. And when we put it on the canvas, it'll still come out with all those variations that you wanted in there. So that's what we're looking for. I just want to put the indication of a little light zinging across here. That easy. Barely, barely touching. Just one hair and some air. Just like you're putting snow on the mountains. That's all we're looking for. That easy. Okay. And shoot. I want to take a little more of the greens and the browns, put the indication that there's a few little weeds up here in the foreground too, like that. Now then, we got a second left here. I'm going to take a little bit of, I'll just use a little midnight black on the liner brush, thin the paint till it's almost, almost ink consistency. And maybe in our world back here, maybe there's some little birds flying. These are little elm birds. You just make a little elm. Tiny little things that are far, far off in the distance there. Now the moment of truth. If we bring a camera right up here, let's pull the old contact paper off and, and take a look see it at how well we did today. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? That's one of the most neat little ideas we've ever come up with. I think we introduced the contact paper idea back in the third series. We back there and we we were cutting out shapes and putting them on and then painting around them. Since that time, it has almost become a standard. People are doing it all over the country, all over the country. I'm going to take a little red, a little paint thinner. I think this little painting is about ready for a signature. Make your paint very thin, once again, almost like ink or water. And we'll sign that one right in the middle. What the heck? Right in the middle. Sometimes I get letters, people say, how do you sign a painting? What, what name do you use? It's really an individual thing. Some people will use their whole name, especially if they got a short name. Some people will use initials, and I've even had people that just use symbols. So it's up to you. You might just want to design your own little logo that you put on every painting. But whatever you put on there, it should be special only for you. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today maybe we'd just do a beautiful little winter scene. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me tell you what I've got done up here. 
I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. And I've covered the entire canvas with just a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So the canvas is wet. It allows us to blend color right up here. It's ready, so let's do it. Let's start today with the old two inch brush, little tiny brush. <laughs> we'll go right into a little bit of the, the thalo blue. Thalo blue is a beautiful, beautiful color blue, but it takes very little. So we just load a little color into the bristles by tapping. See, that just sure is a nice even distribution of color all the way through the bristles. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, let's start up in here and just make little X's, little crisscross strokes. And we go all the way across the top. The color is continually mixing with the liquid white that's on the canvas, and that's why it blends beautifully like this. If you had a dry canvas, as I like to say, you'd, you'd be in Agony City about now because it just doesn't blend like this. There, that's the beauty of the liquid white. It just allows us to blend color on the canvas. All right. See, something like so, a little more color on the old brush, and we'll come right in here and do something like so. That's all, just little, little cross strokes, criss cross strokes, or cross criss, whichever. Now then, Sometimes I like to make the, the edge of paintings a little darker so that it intentionally will bring the eye into the center of the canvas. So for that, I'm going to add a little bit of Prussian blue. The Prussian blue is much darker and much stronger. And that I'm going to apply just to the corners, just to the corners. And we'll go over on this side, put a little bit right there, there. Now very lightly, we can just blend the entire sky. I left that blank intentionally because I think I'll have a big cloud of floats right around there. While we have that color on the old brush, let's add a little more of the phthalo blue. And, same way, just tapping. And I want a little water in this painting. Shoot, you know me. I would paint water in just about everything that I do. I love to paint water. And in this technique, it's one of the easiest things imaginable. There, pull from the outside in, and I want to leave a little area of light right in there. So just pull from the outside in and, and leave that there. That's all you have to do. And then very lightly, just go across the entire canvas. And that little light area will remain in there. And if everything works just right, it'll look like light shimmering across the water when we're all done. And now comes the fun part. It's time to wash the old brush. Wash the old brush. Take off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. All right, we can just stay with that same old brush and go right into a little bit of the little bit of the titanium white. I'm just going to bounce the corner right into a little bit of white there. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, I just want to make some little fluffy clouds, and today I'm just going to do that by just tapping, just tapping. That's all you have to do. In this series, I've done a lot of clouds like this because they're the simplest, easiest kind of clouds that I've ever found. There. And in past series, we've showed many, many other ways of making clouds. So you find the one that works the best for you, and that's the one that you want. I want to add the least little touch of alizarin crimson. I want to put a little, little pinkish flavor down toward the base in this cloud. Not much, just a little. Just to give it a, a hint of pink. There, like a little sunshine's dancing through there. There we go. Now, very lightly, just barely touching the canvas. I want to just barely blend that a little bit, just to bring everything together. But those tap marks up here make very soft little tops to your clouds. Now, with a clean brush, I'm just going to blend it a little, not much. Not much. You don't have to do a lot of blending with this because there's not a great deal of paint on the canvas. But isn't it a nice, easy way of making a big old strong cloud? Tell you what, let's give him a friend. You know me, I, I think everybody should have a friend. So we'll do the same thing. And maybe, yep, right there. We'll just tap in another happy little cloud. Or big cloud in this case. Maybe he lives right out through here. It's up to you. Up to you. Wherever you want it. Something like that. There. Once again, a little touch of the crimson. 
just to flavor it a little, right down here at the base. I'll get my clean, dry two inch brush and we can just blend it and fluff it. There, something as easy as that. And the more you blend it, of course, the more subdued it will become. And you can literally blend it away. And that's the way you correct it. If you ever make a cloud that you don't like, you just blend it away, paint you another one. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. And all I mean by that is that after a while you become so confident with the method that you don't worry. Anything that happens, you can use it in your painting to your advantage. And that happens very, very quickly. Now then, today I'm going to make a little mountain. In past series we've made a lot of mountains, but I still get requests every day for mountains. That seems to be the favorite thing. There, we we'll use a little black a little bit of the Prussian blue and some alizarin crimson all mixed together. But it still looks blue. Pull it out as flat as you can get it. Cut across and we have our little roll of paint lives right out on the edge of the knife. And let's go right up in here. You have to make your first major decision. Where does your mountain live? In our world, it lives right there. Right there. Now you have to make a lot of decisions. How many, how many little peaks and bumps do you have on your mountain? And this is a very individual thing. You decide. You decide. And it could be a mountain that you've seen before, or it could be a mountain that you've seen only in your imagination. It doesn't matter. But it's your mountain. That's the only thing that counts. That it's your mountain, and it makes you happy when you paint it. There. Put another one right there. What the heck? This is a good day to have a little little exercise in painting mountains because they're a lot of fun and of course we're not interested in that happy buck but if you're out if you're out selling paintings very few things sell better than mountains everybody likes to have a nice mountain painting hanging in their home and guess what kind I have in my home <laughs> I have a house full of mountains I love them I love them probably comes from living in Alaska so long there we go. Take the two inch brush and just pull that paint out. Just pull it like that, very gently. And you can just move the paint on this wet canvas, blend it. And if you can see the entire mountain, it's always more distinct at the top than it is at the bottom. And this is mixing with the liquid white and automatically that'll happen. Automatically, you don't even have to worry about it. Don't even have to think about it. Just blend it. See, already I see like a nice valley right in there. When these things happen, treat them as little gifts, little painting gifts. Use them. I'm going to just, see I'm blending upward now to bring a little of that liquid white up in here. I want to lighten this even more. So it looks just like a little valley. There we go. Okay. Now. We don't have a little winter scene, so let's put some snow in there. We'll take titanium white, pull it out as flat as we can get it, really mash down, cut across, get our little roll of paint. Okay, now then, no pressure, no pressure. Take the point of the knife, put it right at the point of the mountain. See, just put it right up here at the point, and then let it flow, but no pressure. I can't say that enough times. Can't say that enough times. Mountains are one of the most fantastic things to paint. Mm. Just love them, and it's so easy like this. There. My son Steve, if there's anything that he really excels at in painting, probably it's mountains. Everywhere I travel that he's been, people tell me, well, his mountain sure put yours to shame. But don't tell him that. He'll get the big head and want to raise. He, he works for us and just travels around and teaches. Or actually, I guess he's self-employed because I don't pay very well. There. Okay. Now then, these back here, I want to make them look like they're very far away. So I'm just going to grab the base of them and gently blend a little bit. And that's about all I'm going to do to them. I want them to be far away. Back here in that valley. 
there since we have a little valley there. Now I'm going to take some white, a little bit of titanium white, some of the thalo blue. We'll mix it together like about so. There. Pull it out very flat. Once again, our little roll of paint. Normally, every time I load the knife, I load it with that little roll of paint. There. And now, just let that sort of drip right down like that. There we go. And I want it to just gradually disappear back into this little valley here. Very quiet little thing. A little bit right in here. Don't want him left out. Something like so. Maybe even a little touch there. That little shadow, though, creates the illusion of a peak or something protruding out. I want to create a mist right here. So I'm just taking the brush and tapping, following those angles, most important, then lift upward. Now, sometimes it's fun to play little games. Take a little more white and watch here. Doop. See there? Now then, we have another whole protrusion right out through here, another peak. That easy. But it needs a shadow. It needs its own little shadow or it won't play with you. Just go away and leave you. Just go away and leave you. All alone. Good clean dry brush. And we can tap that a little bit. There. And right here. There we go. Now. Sometimes it's fun to play little games. Maybe you want to create even more depth and distance in your painting. So let's take a little more of that dark color. Same old mountain color will come right about here. Maybe. Maybe. Yep. We have another little mountain that lives there. Maybe there's another peak. Doesn't matter. Whatever you want, wherever you think it should be. But you need that dark color in there just so it'll show, just so it'll stand out. It separates. It's your good friend. Take care of it. Our two inch brush, grab it. Zoom. Once again, just give it a little pull. Something like that. There you go. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again. Just take our little, little roll of paint right out here on the edge of the knife and put a little bit of snow right on this mountain. A little touch right there on that little peak. But this painting will give you a lot of practice with a knife and, and making some beautiful mountains. And don't be afraid if, if one didn't come out just right to evaluate it, to scrape it off and do it again. Because that's the way we learn, is by doing things over and over, over and over. And it doesn't mean that you've done bad, it means you're normal. Because I'll tell you, there's not anybody who's painted that hadn't scraped it off and redone it many, many times. Not if they're, not if they're a good painter. You can bet they have scraped and repainted. It's part of the price that you pay to learn to paint. That's all. And even that is a tremendous amount of fun. There we go. Something like so. Sometimes, watch here, you can play little games. Maybe we'll just bring all that together. See, it all goes right together. But once again, let's put a little shadow right in there. Something like that. There. See there? Isn't that unbelievable that in just a couple of minutes you can make a mountain like that? And you really can. Maybe the first time you try this, it's going to take you more than a couple of minutes. But the more you practice, the faster you'll become. Initially, don't worry about speed. Don't even think about speed. If you want to learn, don't worry about speed. It comes with just a little practice. And you won't even realize it's happening. One day you'll realize that it took you maybe four or five hours to do a painting, that you're doing that same painting in half the time, and then it's half again, and then pretty soon, pretty soon you could knock these little rascals out just like we do here. And there is no editing here. What you see is actually what happens, even the mistakes. <laughs> there we go. I'm mixing up that same color 
and adding a little white to it just to make a lighter blue. I'm going to put some little trees way back in the distance. And for that, let's use our little fan brush. We just load a little color on it. Something like that. I'm just going to tap downward. Just want to make the indication of some little trees that live way back in the distance, far, far away. We're not looking for detail. Detail comes in the foreground. There. Okay. Back here, just indications once again. Just indications. Too much detail will ruin the illusion of distance in your painting. So don't don't try to put a relief on these little trees that are living way back here. You don't see them in real life. There. Now, let's take our old two inch brush. I want to grab the bottom of this. Watch here. Decide where land and water meet. Pull straight down. Soop, soop, soop. Like that. Go across. And that quick, we have instant reflections. Instant reflections. I'll take a little liquid white, pull it out very flat, cut across, and we'll go right up in here. And I'm just going to cut in a little water line using the knife straight on, pushing very firmly, very firmly. There. Something about like that. The water line just really it sort of splits up these two dark colors and gives the indication where the shoreline is. Good. Now, same old color we were using. I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue to it just to darken it a little. Just to darken it up. Maybe even a little more black too. What the heck? Have it all. Something like that. Okay, let me clean off the old knife. I just wipe the knife on a paper towel or an old soft rag, whatever you have. I'm going to load the old fan brush back up and don't be shy here. Put a bunch of color in that brush. Shoot, get brave. Get brave. Maybe in our world there's a big foothill that lives. Make a decision, Bobby. There we go, right there. See, all you got to do is just decide. Because this is your world. You have total and complete power over this world. You can do anything. Anything that you believe you can do. All you have to do, visualize it in your mind. See it over and over. There. And what you can visualize and believe in, believe that you can do. You can do. I know you can. Because I see pictures every day from fantastic people all over the country and they are creating some of the most beautiful paintings. And that, that truly is the joy of painting. It really and truly is. Put a little detail maybe on that one. Maybe he's a, the big boss tree right there. There. I'm just tapping firmly. Put a little color on the canvas wherever. Trees grow in every size and shape and description, just like people. Just like people. They're different. Some are big, some are small, some are tall, some are small, whatever. That's what makes them so fantastic. It's what makes people so fantastic. If they were all alike, wouldn't it be dull? Whew. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just really filling that in. You could do this with a two inch brush if you wanted to. Probably be a little easier and faster. But since I have this going, what the heck, doesn't matter. Now I'm going to lift gently upward, but all those little splotches now become, look like hundreds, maybe thousands of little trees, or however many you want in your world. You make up your mind how many it looks like. Part of it I'm going to pull straight down, create a reflection under there, like so, go across. When I was a traditional painter, reflections used to absolutely drive me up the wall. Shoot, I can remember taking, painting something and then turning the canvas upside down and trying to repaint it and make it shimmer. Reflections probably are the easiest, simplest, quickest thing that we do in this technique. A little liquid white here. Give the indication of a little water line right underneath that. Pushing very firmly, very firmly. If you ever have one here you don't like, 
Take your two-inch brush, grab it, pull it right into the reflections, and it just goes away. It just goes away. That easy. That easy. All right. Let's put some. Let's put some evergreens in here. Usually, when you have this kind of scenery, there's some beautiful little evergreens living around there. Clean me off a spot to work. I want them to be very dark. So we'll start with black, Prussian blue, some crimson. Well, we'll throw a little blue in there too. It doesn't matter. It, whoops, it really doesn't matter. Whew. Boy, there we go. The old knife caught on the palette there. Sometimes I get in too big a hurry. <laughs> All right, load the brush full of color again. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. Let's go right up in here and decide. Our tree lives right there. So that's all it takes to make a decision. Just decide. Use the corner of the brush. As you work down the tree, push harder and harder, forcing the bristles to bend downward. Most importantly, bend downward. And underneath the limbs, that'll make all them little hangy down things that live under evergreen limbs. I don't know exactly what you call them. I've always called them hangy downs. But I bet you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's not a, a proper word, but you understand. Maybe here's one that he's got a little bend in him. Just like that. There. Okay, and we'll give him a friend that lives right there. There we are. Just back and forth. Makes a neat little sound on the canvas too. I like that. I like the way it sounds. There we are. You know, it's, it's really fantastic to me. When we finish this series, I think there'll be 300 and, 312 Joy of Painting shows. Whew. It's unreal. It literally breaks every record in television history for an art show. 312 shows. And I'm getting a lot of letters now from people that say we haven't seen all the shows. And so I think what I'm going to do, I've been, I've been talking a little bit here, maybe what I'm going to do is pick out some shows that are my favorite. The, the paintings are my favorite paintings. And I think we're going to put them together in a series we're going to call the best of the joy of painting and let you see what my favorites are. And this way people will have the opportunity to see how the joy of painting has progressed from, from the very beginning, because we'll just intermix these shows. I think you'll really enjoy it. But if you'd like to see it, let us know, or even better yet, let the station where you're watching this know. And we'll make it available to them very soon. We'll call it the best of the joy of painting. How's that? I think it'll be fun. I'd like to see some of the old shows myself. There. I'm going to take a little white, a little crimson, a little blue, like a little lavendery color, but sort of pinkish. There. Put the indication here and there of just a little tree trunk. Doop, 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 doop. Wherever you want them. Boop, boop. There. That's enough. We'll take a little liquid white, a little titanium white. I'll grab the least little touch of the phthalo blue and put in there. Something like so. Let's go up in here. And let's just put the indication of a little highlight, a little snow maybe laying out here on some of these. There. Darker, darker, darker. As you work down, darker, darker. There we go. There. Yeah. Over and over and over. Okay, right on down. From here, wherever you want them. There we go. Just a few here and there. Be careful, don't cover up all the dark, because evergreens normally are a little darker than most trees. So. You don't want to kill all that beautiful dark color. I'm going to take some white, a little bit of the phthalo blue on the one inch brush, and maybe in our world there lives some happy little bushes. So right now all I'm doing is putting in a little base color for the little bushes. Wherever we think they should be. Maybe, yeah, why not come right down like that. All right. Let me get a clean one inch brush. I'm going to dip it into liquid white. Liquid white. Let me clean off a little spot here to work with. There we go. Liquid white. Then I'm going to pull the brush in one direction, one direction only. 
right through the titanium white. I want to load a lot of color into the, a lot of paint into the bristles there. Now with that, we're going to come back and just begin highlighting this. Make it look like little snow-covered bushes that are living right out there. Just little jewels shining in the sun. Do one bush at a time. One little bush at a time. Okay, maybe there's one. Wherever you want them. There's another one. Okay. Here and there, and there and here. And you don't have to, you don't have to make all of them white. Leave some of them the dark blue because they'll be in shadow. They'll be back in the shadows where the little bunny rabbit hides. There we go. We can take a little titanium white now. And let's just quickly put the indication here of a little snow right at the base of these. Something like that. But pay attention to angles when you do this. Don't just throw this on at random. Or, and worse yet, don't pull it straight down. If you do, it'll look like huge cliffs. There. Something like this. There we go. And we just fill that in wherever you think the little snow area should be. This is a very cold winter scene. It's all done in blues. It'll make you want to put your coat on. And I think with that, shoot, we about have a finished painting. Scratch in a few sticks and twigs, call that one done. Hope you've enjoyed it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless my friend. Hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, and today I've just covered it with a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So it's all wet and slick and ready to go, so shoot, let's just do a, let's just do a little painting. It's a lot of fun. I thought we'd start with this little tiny brush, the little, the little two-inch brush. And let's go into a small amount of Indian yellow today. What the heck? Just a little tiny bit of Indian yellow. And we'll go right up here. And very lightly. I'm just going to make some little crisscross strokes. I thought maybe today we'd just, we'd just do a, a very simple little painting that just makes you feel good. Just a very nice, warm little painting. Maybe, maybe a little scene that's back in the woods and stuff. I'm such a fanatic for nature in the woods and all the trees and bushes and stuff. That's really what I like to paint. So let's do that today. Without cleaning the brush, maybe the least little touch of the yellow ochre. Not much. Very, very little color. I want to keep this guy quite subdued and quiet so you don't really notice it unless you look for it. There we go. Shoot, maybe, maybe the least little touch of the bright red, too. It doesn't matter. But very, very small amount. Just a little pink in the sky. Don't, I don't want to set the sky on fire. And very quickly you can do that. Just want to give it a, a nice little pinkish hue. Maybe a little touch more over in here. There. Something like that. All right. And then just gently going across the entire canvas. Just blend out all the little brush strokes. There we go. Okay, maybe, maybe we'll wash this brush. What the heck? I just really like to wash brushes. Keeps my, keeps my crew here on their toes. <laughs> All right. Now then, good clean dry brush. I'm gonna go right into a little bit of the, little bit of the midnight black. Don't want a whole lot of paint. Just a little. All right. Let's go back up in here, and right on the top. I'm going to take a little bit of that black and begin making little, little crisscross strokes still. Something about like so. There we go. Maybe here and there there's a happy little, little floater in there, wherever you think they should be. That's exactly where they should be. There, a little bit more color on the brush. And we'll go right in like that. But this is just midnight black. Just knock off any excess color there, because I want to keep it quite dark. And maybe, why not? Why not have another little cloud right about here? And all we're doing is just sort of tapping downward with this two-inch brush. Maybe this little cloud, shoot, maybe it comes way on out here, I don't know. Wherever you want it. 
wherever in your world you can do anything that you want to do. Any old thing that you want to do. We'll put another one there. Maybe over in here on this side. Shoot, maybe there's a couple more over here. Just whatever. Painting should be very individual. Everybody will see nature through different eyes. And that's what you should paint, the way you see it. I'll wash the old brush off again. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and there we go again. Now then, with a clean, dry brush, and very gently here, I'm just gonna blend all this together. Just blend it all together. Isn't that a fantastic way of making some little clouds that just jump right out at you? And you can do this, even if you've never painted before. This you can do. This you can do. We try to make painting simple enough that everybody can do it and, and really achieve fantastic results, even with very limited amounts of practice. There, and of course, the more you practice, the easier it gets and the better you get. I'm gonna take a little, let's use a little black. Maybe I'll put the least little touch of, least little touch of thalo blue into it also. Mostly black though, but a little bit. I'm gonna have a little water in this painting. So we'll, we'll have water maybe right here. I don't know. It really doesn't matter at this point. You just put in some color and whatever we don't want to be water, we'll just paint right over it because this is our world and we literally, literally can do anything that we want to do in this world. You have total and complete power here. There. Now then. I tell you what, we'll just keep using that same old brush. I'll just put a little bit more of the black on it so it has black and a least little touch of blue, but mostly black. And not a lot of color on the brush. Okay, maybe in our world back in here, let's just do doop, something like that. In fact, I'm gonna wipe a little of that paint off, a little more, no, that's better. I want it very quiet. Just take the side of the brush and we'll put the indication of some little things that live way back in the distance. Little indications of trees. I don't want a lot of detail. It's too far away, too far away. Just want some little indications here and there. There. Wherever. Sometimes you can just tap downward. And if you want to make them look like little, maybe little evergreens far away, you can just do the brush like that. There we go. Softer and softer and softer till they just basically disappear out here. Very quiet, very subdued. There we are. take a clean and very dry brush and I want to just tap the base of this. I want to create the illusion of mist down here and soften all this up. Just soften it up. Then lift gently upward. See how soft that is now? That tapping and lifting will push all those little things far, far back in the distance. And you can go right over the top of some of them to really soften them. There. Okay. We're going to see very, very little of that, so I'm not interested in a lot of detail back there at this point. Later on, we'll worry about it, but not now. Not now. We just have fun now. Right into a little bit of black. Maybe there's an indication here and there of just a few little bushes a little closer, so they'll be a little darker. But once again, I'm not looking for a lot of detail yet. Too soon. When we get further into the foreground, then we'll begin seeing more. Right now, I'm just interested in getting a few little things up here. There. Something maybe about like that. Okay. Now I thought today, let's have a little bit of fun. Shoot, maybe we'll, maybe we'll paint something a little different. Get our brush nice and clean and ready. Maybe in our world way back here, I sort of visualize these and, and allow the visualizations to happen in your mind. Maybe we'll have water running back through here and, and maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little bridge that goes right over the water. So let's do the bridge first, and then we'll put things in the foreground. Start with Van Dyke Brown, maybe even a little dark sienna mixed with it. Cut off our little roll of paint, and it should live right out on the edge of your knife. See there? Now, where should our bridge be? Let's have it right about here. You have to make your first major decision, 
and all you do is just touch that little roll of paint will pull right off your knife. There. Maybe that's just the top rail of the bridge. And you could make any kind of bridge you want. I think today I'll just make a very simple one, easy little one to do, even if you've never done a bridge. This is very easy. There. And there's the, here's the bridge's floor or the bottom of the bridge. So it's a little thicker than the rail up there. And then, and let's see, we'll put some little, some little support doers in here. We'll put one in, and maybe there's some little, yep, see them? See there? We're just using the small edge of the knife, or you could just use a small knife. I'm just too lazy to pick it up. There. Looks like, when I was a kid, I used to, with string, make Jacob's ladders. This looks like that, sort of. Maybe this is Jacob's bridge, who knows? I don't even know who Jacob is. There. But see there, that easy. That old knife will do fantastic things. We'll put one little arm right here. Now, take a little white, a little of the dark sienna, maybe even a little touch of the bright red into it. Ooh, that's nice. I'm gonna put a little yellow ochre too. A little roll of paint. And right up here on the top, the lights zinging down on top of our little bridge. Doom. So we have a little highlight right up here on top. Right there. And here and there, and there and here. See, right there. Maybe a little coming on this side of the post. Maybe our light's coming from the left today. It's up to you, wherever. Wherever. Wherever you want your son to be. That's where it can be in the painting. Hope you saw my son in the last program. Little Devil's quite a character, isn't he? He really can paint. I think he's, as of the date of this taping, I think he's 24 years old. He travels all over the country just teaching the painting method that you see here. Maybe if he gets to your town doing demonstrations or something, he works with a lot of the PBS stations, except maybe you'll get out to see him. There we go. If you see him, hassle him a little bit and tell him I sent you. There. Now, we need something underneath there. I'm gonna get the small knife. We need something to keep this bridge out of the water. Right now, it would fall right in the water because there's no little support doers, maybe. Maybe there's a little post that lives right there. I Guess you need a pretty good sized post to hold up the bridge, so we'll make it a little bigger. Something like that. A Little bit of our little highlight color. Not much, touch, there. Sort of gives an indication of a little, little doer there. Maybe we need some little support brackets on it. There. Oh, I wish the bridge was really that easy to build. Let's reflect that right into the water. Grab it, pull down. Now we'll take our two inch brush, pull that down and just go across. That easy. We just made a little reflection there. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the liquid white and mix it with a little of the titanium white just to make this a little thinner than normal. And we'll put a little ripple of water right around the foot there. Sort of cleans it all up, gives the impression that maybe the water's moving slowly, very slowly by this little bridge. A little, little slow river stream here. Big old fish is laying right under there and resting, taking life easy. I like to fish. Though I'm not a very good fisherman. Shoot, I catch the old fish and put a Band-Aid on his mouth and pat him on the tutu and put him back in the water and, and wish him well. And maybe, maybe I'll be lucky and get the chance to, to catch him again one day. Okay, take a little black, Prussian blue, phthalo green, and put some crimson in there. There we go. Mix them all up. I'm gonna mix a pretty good pile of paint. I'm gonna make some evergreen trees. What the heck, and some big bushy trees. And we're gonna wipe off the knife. There. Let's start maybe, hmm, ready to make a big decision? Maybe in our world, just sort of stand back and look. Maybe, yep, right about there. We'll have a big bush. I'm gonna push both ends of this bridge back into the 
push you so we don't have to worry about it. Right in there. And maybe there's a big tall bank right here. There we go. There. Right out in the water. We'll take a little bit of brown and white. Just highlight a little bit here and there. Maybe I'll put a lot of bushes on there. So we don't really care at this point. We don't even know. Some of this will show. A lot of it won't. Now we can come back in here and drop in the indication of just all kinds of, well, I'll tell you what, let's just bring it right on around here. Let your imagination go. Just let that old imagination go. Maybe it comes there. What the heck? Get crazy. Hmm. That's what makes it fun. What makes it fun? There we are. Now we was going to paint some evergreens a long time ago and I got carried away with rocks and stones and all those things. So let's make, in our world, there lives, does now, the little evergreen tree right there. Use a the corner of the brush as you work down the tree. Push harder and harder, forcing the bristles to bend downward. There they go. A little bit of phthalo green in there just gives it sort of a gives it sort of a flavor, almost like blue spruce, which is one of the most beautiful evergreen trees there ever was. There. Okay. Maybe I'll just put a couple in here. You know, it's interesting over the years and the, all the time we've been doing this period, I've had so many little creatures and stuff. I thought maybe today I'd just, while I'm putting these trees on, because I'm just going to put them on. I'll just show you a quick bunch of little photographs of some of my little creatures and let you take a look, see, maybe you'll remember some of them because they're very special to me. They play a very important role in my life. And I just absolutely love the little devils. That's Squirrely Girly Brown. <laughs> She's quite a character. And there's Danielle, the, the crow. He belonged to Ann Young, one of the bird ladies that lives very close to me. There, he's a character. He's all grown up and gone now. And there's Carmen Shaw with her deer. Hey, Bob Storer, we went sail fishing together. Of course, we let him go too. And there's my little rat coon. Isn't he something? There's another picture of Squirrely Girly. She's something else. She's still with me, Squirrely Girly. She's almost ready to turn loose now. Almost ready. We do not keep any of these animals. We don't try to make pets out of them because they are wild creatures and God meant for them to, to be outside. The only thing that I want to do and the, all the people who help them is just to give them the best possible chance to survive. A lot of times they get orphaned or hurt and that's all we're trying to do. Let me put some trees over on this side. There. Okay, maybe a little tree right there. Because I really think wild animals, they should be wild. They should be wild. But sometimes, like everything else, they need a little help. And if I can help them and give them a little head start on life, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. There we go. But some of them I get very attached to. It's awful hard to turn them loose after a while. There we are. I guess my love of animals was probably instilled by my mother. She always loved animals and she helped me raise a little squirrely girl, in fact. Her and Annette and I, between the three of us, we got up in the middle of the night and we fed them and we took care of them and, and it's very rewarding. I'm gonna take a little bit of that same color. Maybe we'll have a little lamb that comes right down here. We gotta do something with all this. So I'll just tap in some dark color. Just using the old two inch brush, like that. There. Okay, bring it right on down. And you could fill this up here with a, eh, you could use a paint roller, doesn't matter. Just a, it's sort of a good place to practice and get the feel of your brush. Maybe over in here, this comes, we'll have this one come right down to the edge of the water. And don't worry if you get something in there because we need a reflection under there anyway. 
fact, if, if it didn't happen automatically, you'd have to go back in there and paint it. So don't worry about it. See, you just grab it and pull it down. You need that reflection to set it right down into the water and go across. That easy. There we are. Now then, grab our little fan brush that had that color on it. Since there's blue in it and green in it, we can go right into yellow, yellow ochre, little Indian yellow, and make a nice dark green color. Maybe I'll get leave them a little black. A little sap green too, I like it. Ooh, that's what I was looking for, sap green. There, let's go back up in here. Now then, let's begin highlighting some of these trees. Just figure out which one's in the foreground, which one's in the background. Do the one that's in the background first. There, and then let the other one come right over the top of it. Here we are. There's another one. Just like so. All you're doing is tapping, letting the bristles bend slightly downward. Slightly downward. There. Let them get darker and darker as they work downward. There you are. Okay, let's go on the other side. We gotta give these little trees something too. We don't want them left out. That old tree would be upset with us. We don't want that. I did the one on both sides because I think I want the one in the middle to be in front of the other two. So you do those first and then do that one. And it'll give the impression that it's it's in the foreground. There we go. Shoot, I didn't know he was going to paint a whole forest today, but we did. It's all right. It's a lot of fun. We got a lot of practice, so it wasn't wasted. Take an old two-inch brush and go right into that green, the so sap green, the Indian yellow, yellow ochre, little touch of the bright red, and now and then only. Load some color right onto the bristles. Let's go up here. Now then, let's begin making big decisions here. Let's have a little grassy area. It comes right down like that. There. Just tap. And the more you tap, the more that base color that you'll pick up and the darker it'll become. It'll just disappear after a while. You have to decide. There. Okay. And you can do this over and over till it gets just as soft as silk. Looks like velvet grass laying there if you want to. And the more you tap it, the softer it'll become. All right. Just layer after layer after layer. There. Okay, right down in here, a little something. Right on down. Okay, let's go on the other side and put a little over there. Maybe it comes right down like that. It sneaks right out of those trees. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, tell you what. Take some Van Dyke Brown Dark Sienna. I'm just going to put a little indication of a little soil, a little dirt, right down here at the water's edge. Something maybe about like that. I don't want a lot. Just a little. Just a little. A little of that brown and white. Give it a little tiny bit of highlight. Don't want much. Then I can take a little, a little fan brush and just pop in some little bushes right down here. Brings it all together. A little bit of the liquid white and the firm white mixed together. There, we can come right back in here. There, just put us in a little little watery line there. Okay, shoot. I need a play way to get to this little bridge back here. So let's take a little Van Dyke Dark Sienna mixed together and just put the indication of a little, little path right in there. Choom. Take some white, maybe even a little of the bright red, a little yellow ochre. Be brave. Barely touch. Just let it sort of graze across there. There. Right on out. All right. Now then, take our brush with the little grassy colors and just bring some right up to the edges here. Something about like that. 
If you want a little more distinct bushes as we get closer, we'll use the fan brush and just pop them in, pushing upward. There we go. Now, let's find a nice one inch brush. I'll dip it right into a little bit of a little bit of the liquid white. We'll go into some green and yellow. Pull it in one direction. Now, let's take, put some nice highlights on all these little things here. We'll start with the one, as usual, that's the farthest away and work forward. Always working forward. Let them just hang right out over the bank here. There they are. All kinds of little things. One little bush at a time. They don't get greedy. <laughs> I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting. One at a time. That's all we're looking for. Just drop them in. Maybe even over here. Shoot, there's one little, two little, three little bushes right there. Whatever you want. Just something to sort of break it up a little. Maybe back in here there's a few. Can even have one or two right in here. There we are. Let's grab an old fan brush. Shoot. You know me. <laughs> I always have to have a big tree. Let's take some of the browns, both browns. Here's your bravery test. Make those little noises. There's a little tree. And there's his little brother. So we gotta give him, gotta give him a little friend there. Don't want him to get lonely out here. I'm just gonna touch a little highlight to the edge of these little rascals. Just a little. We'll take our little script liner brush. I'm gonna dip it into a lot of paint thinner. I want it to be as thin as ink. Very, very thin. Look at there, it just absolutely drips right off there. Nice soupy. Can't just go up in here. Now with that, we can come back in here because it's a very thin paint, it'll slide. We can just run it right over the top of all these little doers. Put us all kind of little branches and limbs and things like that on here. Maybe these old trees, maybe they're dead. Maybe we just got naked limbs out here. There. If you wanted to put a few leaves on, you certainly could. It's up to you. I think today I'm going to just leave them sort of hanging around. Something about like that. Something about like that. There. And you could just take a knife and here and there and there and here. Scrape in a few little sticks and twigs and things like that. And you're about to the point you have a little finished painting. Hope you try this one. It'll really, you'll, you'll enjoy it. So give it a try and send me a photo. Let me see how you do with it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. I'm certainly glad you could join us today. Today is the last show of the 24th series, so I thought today we'd just do something that's really nice. Let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here. Today I have my standard old pre-stretched canvas, and I've covered the entire canvas with black gesso and allowed that to dry completely. On top of that, after the gesso was dry, I've added a very, very thin coat of liquid clear. And then I've taken a paper towel and wiped off all the excess. The reason I do the paper towel wipe off thing is because so many people had wrote and told me that they were putting too much clear on the canvas. And that's easy to do. If you take a paper towel and wipe it off, what's left is just right. And the problem is it's clear, so you can't tell exactly how much you have on. Alrighty. So we have that straightened out. Let's have some fun. I'm going to take the old two-inch brush. I'm going to go right over to the blue, get a little phthalo blue and white mixed together. We'll just mix it right on the brush. It's fine. And let's go up here in the sky. Maybe in our world today, we'll just start right up in here with a little touch of that phthalo blue and white. And just begin bouncing in a little bit of color here and there, just wherever you'd like to have it. There. Just like something a lot like that. We don't care. There. And if you want it to get darker and darker, you just apply less pressure and allow more of the black gesso to show through. That's all you have to do. It works so fantastic. There we are. 
I just want a little hint of blue up in the sky. Maybe we'll do a, let's do a little winter scene today. What the heck? What the heck? The last one, maybe we'll do a little winter scene. It's a little, a little different, a lot of fun. All right. That's about all I'm going to put up there for blue. Then we'll wash the brush. Shake it off. <laughs> just beat the devil out of it. Okay. Shoot, that works good. Let's just keep using that little two-inch brush. I'll go into a little bit of the titanium white. Just plain old titanium white. I'm just going to tap the top corner right into a little bit of white paint. Let's go back up in here. And just using that top corner, I just want to put in the indication of some little cloud shapes here and there. Something about like that. Wherever. I don't know. We just sort of let them float around and have a good time. There. The more you tap, the more it's going to pick up the blue and everything that's underneath. And it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter. Or less and less paint. I'm sorry, it won't get lighter. It actually gets darker. But there's less and less paint. Okay, maybe something about my cat. This is the easiest way I've found to make little fluffy clouds, and I've used it throughout this series. There. All right. Now then, I'm going to go back to the old two inch brush. I have another one here that's nice and clean, and I'm going to sort of tickle it. Just a little bit, just enough to stir it up a little bit. Not much, not much. A little tiny, tiny X's. There, and we can fluff it a little bit. Barely, barely grazing the canvas. I, I just can't tell you what a light touch that is. See there, but that easy, that easy. You can make a happy little cloud. And maybe, maybe this little cloud has a friend right here. It has a little friend that is right here with him just sort of floats around and has a good time. Clouds may be one of the freest things in nature. There we go. Something, oh, I don't know, like that. It's up to you. In your world, you put as many or as few little clouds as you want. Turn the brush sort of to change the shapes. Let it just disappear right off over in here. Wherever. And back to the other brush that's clean and dry. So we're using, I'm using two two inch brushes here. Just one of them has paint on it, the other one's very clean. Very lightly. Give it a little fluff and barely graze the canvas. But isn't that a fantastic easy little way of making some very effective little clouds? And you can do it. You can do it. Maybe down in here, take a little of that Maybe I'll just put a little bit of bluish color. Maybe we'll put some dark clouds on top of that. Why not? Show you how to do some nice little dark clouds. All right. Okay, let me wash the old brush again. I just, I just like to wash the brush. There. Okay. Let's make a mixture of, we'll use some black. I'll put a little Prussian blue and a lizard and crimson. So we have black, blue, and crimson. There we go. Let me wipe off the old knife here. There. Now, I'll just use the same old brush. Tap a little color in the same way. Now we have to make some big decisions. I want some big old mean looking clouds up here in the sky. Big old mean ones. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a snowstorm coming. There. Just drop these in. Ooh. See, the black gesso allows you to do this extremely quick. It takes very little color. Maybe, maybe they just sort of float all down in here. and You can bring them right out across these to push those light ones back. Sometimes when there's a big storm coming, it'll be very dark, very close in. But you can look through and see, you can see the good, the good times right back here. There we go. And that's what we're going to try to accomplish here. Just to make it look like we back in the distance there, you can see fair weather. Maybe up here where, where we live, is the storms are coming. The storms are coming. There we go. Something right along in here. And all we're doing is just tapping on a few little basic shapes. That's all I'm looking for right now. No detail. 
just very basic little shapes. Back to our clean brush. I'm just varying back and forth between dirty brush, clean brush. Using just the top corner, very gently, I'm going to stir these up. Just want to blend them so you can see a little light through them. Don't want them solid black. There. Every once in a while, you'll hear me beat the brush. That's just to remove excess paint. There. Why well, is this going to be a mean old sky? See it coming now. There. Just knocking off the paint because you will pick up a little paint off here. Okay. Just barely, barely touching the canvas though. There we go. And you can blend this to any degree of softness that you want. I don't want this one to get too soft though because if it, if you blend it together too much, you're going to lose that effect that there's a big old storm coming. You can tap it to blend too. Either way. If you have a lot of time, you can sit and tap it like this until you can create some of the most gorgeous shapes you've ever seen. There we go. All right. Very lightly now. We'll just blend the entire sky. Just blend it. But isn't that a neat way of making a, a ferocious sky? Oh my gosh, you know something's fixing to happen there. And it's very, very simple when you do it this way. The black gesso on the canvas and the little bit of liquid clear really makes your life, your painting life at least, much, much easier. Now then, I just take another old, well here's one that's dirty, we'll just keep using it. I'm gonna make some brown, and for that, use alizarin crimson and sap green in about equal parts. As I've mentioned on some of the other shows in this series, you can take this to the red side or the green side. Usually I take it a little bit to the reddish side, but that's a personal preference. Strictly up to you. Strictly up to you. There. Maybe a little bit more red in there. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Okay, wipe off the old knife here. And I'm just going to tap the old two-inch brush right into that. Just, just the corner of the brush right there. There. Maybe there's some little trees back here in the background. Okay. All we do, I'm just going to take the top corner of the brush and tap in some little basic shapes way back in here. There they come. A little more color. There. Wherever you think they should be exactly where they should be. I'm not looking for a lot of detail. It's too far away. I don't want detail yet. We'll have a lot of detail in the foreground, but right back here, just want the indication of some happy little trees that live back in there. And maybe I'm going back to the to some alizarin crimson, a little black, and Prussian or thalo blue. It doesn't make any difference, whichever one you happen to have. I'm just going to Tap the brush in like that. I'm gonna have a little, I'm gonna have a little footy hill back here. A little foothill lives right here. And we'll just tap in a little indication. About like that. And give it a little downward pull. See, I want the bottom to have that little light area. And on the top, I'm gonna lift slightly upward so it looks like little trees far, far away. And you could probably just do it like that, up and down, create the same effect. But just tiny little short strokes. Tiny little short strokes. I'm going to add a little more of the thalo blue to that color. Same color. Same color. But I wanted a little bit more to the bluish side. And maybe there's a few little, a few little happy trees right back in here. There. Something maybe like that just so we can see indications. Now right now it's going to be hard to see that. In a few minutes I'm going to put snow underneath there and you won't believe how those will show up. Right now they're a little bit dark. Now with our liner brush, some of that nice brown color that we made from the sap green and lizard crimson, I'm just going to put the indication here and there of a few little trunks in some of these trees. Just some happy little trunks. Maybe even a few that 
protrude right up over the top, wherever. There. Hope you can see those. They're in there. We know they're in there. That's the most important thing. And maybe that's good and clean. Shoot. <laughs> Let's get crazy. Let us take, let us take, we'll use black, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, all mixed together. There. Okay, let me clean off the old knife. Let's make us a few nice little evergreens that live back there. Maybe, maybe just a couple. Maybe just a couple. Load the brush full of color. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. Let's go up in here and make a decision. Our evergreen tree, ooh, just do it. Make a decision and drop it in. Lives right there. Start with just the corner of the brush. As you work down the tree, add more and more pressure. Maybe this is a maybe this is a big fat tree. What the heck? I'm using the brush almost straight on this time. I want to make this tree big and fat. There. Big heavy tree. Nice old tree. Got a lot of character. Looks like a Christmas tree. There. And let's give him a friend. I don't want him to be lonely back here. There. Poor little tree. Didn't, didn't want him to be lonely. Didn't want him to be lonely. There we are. Okay. Something about my cat. Now then, let me wash the old brush out here. And we just wash this brush also with odorless thinner and then wipe it on a paper towel to clean it. That's all there is to it. I'm going to take some white, some phthalo blue, mix it together, make a nice, eh, put a little more white right there. Yeah, something like that. Now, I'm going to take the fan brush and dip it into the liquid clear. Dipped it right in the clear. So this is quite a thin paint now. But the big thing is, is the clear will make it react different on the canvas. It'll look different. Let's go up in here. Let's come right along in here and put some nice, look at that. See, let it bend downward. Put some beautiful little snow-covered branches out here on this tree. Darker, darker, darker toward the base, as always. As always. Now. Back in the background, a little more of the clear. I don't want this tree in the background to be as, as bright. I want you, don't want you to notice it as much. Just want you to know it's there. So I'm using a darker color and much less. Now you know he's back there and you can see him, but hopefully he didn't stand out and, and grab all the attention. <laughs> so they'll do that. But the liquid clear is fantastic when you want to really highlight something where you you make an effect like that. It works extremely well. Okay. Take off any excess paint because we're going to go right in there. We'll just use this old two inch brush. What the heck? Let's go into titanium white. And we'll load quite a bit, just like we were loading it to a chisel edge. Just like we was loading it to a chisel edge. Let's go up in here. Got to make a big decision. Where does the snow lay? I think right under this tree. Pull right across. Just like that. Just like that. And because the little bit of clear is on there, that'll slide just like glass. If this was a dry canvas, you'd have a hard time making that paint slide on there. It wouldn't be smooth like this. That's so smooth. There. And look how it stands out against that dark color. Shoot. I'm gonna, I gotta play a little bit more. I'm going to take a little bit of brown, a little white in it, reach over here, get some paint thinner. I'll make it real thin. So I have just brown, just brown, and a little white with paint thinner. Then I'll make another little pile here that's just basically white with the least little bit of, little, excuse me, let me get a little touch of the paint thinner in that too. I want both of these colors to be very, very thin. There. Now then, we'll take our liner brush and we'll go through this color first. Load it full. Then I'll go through this one and just get color on one side. 
maybe yep maybe there's a nice tree that lives here and we can do both sides of the tree at one time we got the light side and the dark side at one stroke put a few little limbs on it not many not many something maybe like that load it again and maybe we got another little tree lives right there that's his friend that's his friend We'll put a few little arms on him. There. All right. Just a little tree that's sitting back like that. I think today, let's do a little cabin right in there. That's such a lovely place, right, right there at that tree. One of the easiest ways I've found, take your knife and scrape off a basic shape. Ooh, right over my tree. That's all right. We know how to make him. Maybe there's a little... Maybe he's got a little porch in the back. Maybe it's not even a cabin. Maybe it's an old barn or something. I don't know. Whatever you want it to be. You make a decision. There we go. Just scraping out the excess. Take our brown color. And we just sort of fill that in. We're just blocking in color. Just blocking in color. We're not too concerned about anything at this point. Okay, we'll take some white. Some of that same brown color, maybe even a least little touch of crimson into it, just to warm it up a little. Cut across, get our little roll of paint. Very lightly, barely touching. See, we'll make the front of the cabin that easy. Take a little bit of dark brown under that. Make the indication of a lot of little boards in there just by touching. Just by touching. Let's put a door right there. Got a little door for his house. Now, a little bit more of the dark. Over in this side, just a hint. Just a hint, not much. It's much, much too dark over here. There's, over on this side, there's very little light. Now, I wanna take pure titanium white, and I want it to bounce along here. I want this to look like, I want it to look rough ragged. If you want it to look smoother, make it in a single stroke. I want it to look like it's just really, oh, snow's just really piled up there in that old roof. Maybe there's even some holes in the roof. Maybe the old house is just deserted. What the heck? Something about like that. Take the small knife. I'm just going to put the indication of a couple little windows right over on that side. A little white with some gray on it. I mean, a little brush with some gray on it. A little outline indication of a couple of windows. I like that. Now, back to our old brush that has the white on it. We've got to put some snow right around this little cabin here. There we go. Nobody's home here. like that. In here and there we can touch the least little amount of that blue to create a little cool shadow effect in the snow. There. This little phthalo blue here and there. Alright. See with a big old brush it doesn't take but a second. You can just drop these rascals in in no time. There. And maybe. Maybe. In our world, I'll take some of that brown with paint thinner. Maybe there's what remains of a little fence out here. There. A few little uh, rails on him. Like so. A little bit of the liquid white. Put the indication of a little snow right up on top of those. And there's a little on the top of the fence. Little snow's just laying up there resting, taking life easy. Take her knife with a little bit of that white, put a little snow right around his foots here. There. Just a little. There, maybe it's piled up right in there. Okay. Shoot, we've done pretty good there. Tell you what, let's put a big tree on the other side. You know me. 
You know me, I always like him big old trees and he lives in our world right there. That's your bravery test, right there. Right there, just drop him in. We'll put some bushes and some weeds and all that stuff around his little foots. I'll just use a top corner, the old two inch brush. And just tap in a few little things. Maybe right on out like that, I don't know. There. Just tap them in. Might even have a, maybe there's a baby tree lives there too. Little baby tree right in there. So you just, when you're doing these things, just sort of look at them. Make up your mind, drop them in. Maybe there's some little sticks and twigs and good things like that. Wherever. As I mentioned, this is the last show of the 24th series. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. And I also mentioned in one of the earlier series where we're thinking about putting together a series because so many people have wrote and said, I haven't got to see all the shows and there's over 300 shows. How can I see them, etc., etc." We're putting together a series now we're going to call the best of the joy of painting. And I went through and picked out my favorite paintings from the last couple of hundred shows. And we're going to put those together at random and create a whole new series called The Best of the Joy of Painting. So you can see the painting series from the time it started till today. If you'd like to see that, give your station a call. Tell them you're interested in it. I'm going to take a little brown and white and just barely touch this. Give it a little sideward pull. There. You know, and as we get close to the end of this old series, there's so many people I'd love to thank for making all this possible. And I just, there isn't time to thank everybody. But there's so many special people. And I'd like to mention just a couple. My partners, Walt and Annette Kowalski. You know, Annette writes all of our books and puts them together. She's a fantastic artist in her own right. And my wife, Jane, a super, super lady that has believed in me for the last 24 series, and she's helped make all this possible. Jane, thank you very much for all you've done. I'm gonna take some brown, some paint thinner, mix it together in the liner brush. Let's go up here and put some limbs on here. And the people here at the station, here at WIPB in good old Muncie, Indiana, they're one of the finest group of people I have ever known. I talk about the mean old director, but she's not really all that mean. Well, maybe she is, but very nice lady, and she's made all this possible. Her talents are in every show. And there's a couple of people here that have been here since the very beginning, Richard Collins, Jerry Morton, they've been with us. And I'd like to publicly thank all of you for a fantastic, fantastic job. And maybe most important, they've become my friends. There, just put all kinds of little limbs here. There we go. And I wish it was time to tell everybody thank you personally. But there's not. But you know who you are, and you know that I care. There we go. Okay. Tell you what, let's get crazy here. Find my brush. Go right up in here. I'm gonna put a little snow right underneath that. Choom. And it doesn't matter if it picks up a little of that, it makes it look like little shadows. And maybe, maybe there's even a little remaining part of a fence right there that was there one day. Still a couple old things across there. Put a little highlight on him. Just a touch like so. And with that, put a little snow under him. I think we have a finished painting and a finished series. And from all of us here, I'd love to wish you happy painting. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care, my friend, and, and God bless.